Hey everybody, get your dick out, because this Green Night Weekend podcast, and I fucked that up. It's fucking Pride Month on the Green Light Weekend podcast, and to commemorate, we had our good friend Elliot Weber promoting his new comedy album, Coming Out. Yeah, it was good. Good fun. Yeah. I enjoyed the fuck out of myself. It was really fun. I like Elliot. We always talk more about dicks than I would expect, which is good. He tells me about fashion and stuff. Elliot is a bisexual man. He really opened up on this one, no pun intended. Well, far more than the first one. Yeah. We didn't talk about his sexuality whatsoever on the last podcast, which I found strange. I thought it would come up, and that's why I started Kate's uh, immediately about her sexuality. <laughs> Gay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. Um, it's just because Brian loves everybody. I really do. I and really he wants, do. He's interested in everybody's feelings and and interest and things yeah comes out of love it does come out of love definitely not out of hate um when i scream sexist things while i'm driving and have road rage that's hate a little bit yeah a little bit of hate um i'm just kidding i love everybody (laughs) but yeah we talked about the coming out tour a little bit he traveled all around went to minneapolis phoenix denver i think he did some spots in texas around colorado um we talked about zombie STD type things. Mm-hmm. But I condoms. We covered homophobia, murder, and porn in the first 12 minutes? 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Yeah, so, so it's a fun 13 minutes. Starts as a doozy. Dad, you're really going to be proud of this one. <laughs> um, happy Pride Month, everybody. We love you all. Have yeah. a good week. It's Wednesday. Well, fuck yeah. Yeah. You yeah. want to check us out? Yeah. Green Light Weekend um, on YouTube, uh, GLW underscore podcast on Instagram, Yep, and uh, Green Light Weekend at gmail.com for all your email notes, questions, comments, concerns. Yeah. And also Hate you can mail. DM us on our Instagram. We check that pretty regularly. Um, shout out to Jody Foster Matrix for letting us know Rose Nami Eunice is in town. Mm-hmm. Um, we love the Whiskey Reel podcast and Miss Marketing. Comedy Showcase Durango. Check out on Facebook and ComedyShowcaseDurango.com. We love them. And fucking Trip. Hip Hop Trip on SoundCloud. It's been the soundtrack for the Greenlight Weekend for 62 episodes. Our boy Ethan Esparza. He's a great Amer- He's a great Norwegian American. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's dope. That is pretty gangster. Uh, we love you all. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this motherfucking episode. Peace. All right, Trip, are you rebel or you hip-hop? Well, it's all the same to me, sneakers and flip-flops. Now the way I rock them straight to the tip-top. Wear it on my sleeve and carry passion in a zip flop. Super cool in it, I'm colder than Kid Ross. And telling any big boss to get lost, I spit raw. So Rick Ross can kick rocks. No denying that this white boy spit tall. The missing piece in that puzzling jigsaw. They never even had a <laughs> You probably can. Yeah, generally, Is you that, can spot out people that might have diabetes. Did that mean we were we're going? We're yeah, rolling. that's what that I just like to jump into it now. Yeah, I like the, I like the idea of being. I wish you could tell if somebody sucked dick or not. I wish every time you sucked a dick, something happened, so you could look at people and tell how many dicks they've sucked. Do like, you do you find your gaydar is better than just a straight person's gaydar? Can you can you tell? I a think little so. Easier? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I had a weird thing at work today. Just now, I was. Customer, or yeah, just like, like, I don't think it's gaydar. I think it's more like sexual, like, right. You could tell when people are into you or if they're not into you, right. And the fact kind of thing that you're into dudes. Do you think that you're just aware that it's a possibility? Yeah, because I I rarely look at like dudes have to pretty much eye fuck me and make eye contact for me to be like, oh, that guy just wants look to at fuck you me. And do Brian like the, thinks everybody uh, wants to fuck him. Mouth, yeah. Well, I, I you accidentally know. played footsies with you there too. They might. Sorry. Brad thinks everybody wants to fuck him. <laughs> 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 Lake. So, are you guys gonna introduce me or what? Oh yeah. I don't know. You guys run your podcast. However you want. This is Elliot Weber. We'll this do a we'll do an intro in the very beginning, so oh, then they gotcha. probably already know. Okay. But, okay. but okay. yeah, this is Elliot Weber. Sorry for who I am. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot Weber came on. We were gonna have Kate McLaughlin on as well, but she had a family thing, so she couldn't make it. 
but he's here to promote his new album, the Coming Out album. Coming Out is this what it's called? Is coming it, Out, my, the album Coming Out, not the Coming Out album. Not the, yeah, that'd be a pretty stupid. It sounds like something from the '60s. Yeah, that'd be a stupid way to name it. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, also, um, thanks for having me. Thanks of for course, coming on, man. I appreciate um, getting to hang out with you guys. Yeah, I'm uh, glad you still wanted to come on. We were going to do this either way, and me and Phil were just going to bullshit if you didn't come on. So, Well, I figured might as well I made the time commitment. You know, I had the afternoon blocked off. Nice. Like a so. professional, you were early. I'm going to go kill my dog. Yeah, word. That sounds good. <laughs> You'll uh, probably hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, listeners, keep a sharp eye out if you're... <laughs> If you're one of the keen listeners, you will hear, you will hear Phil murdering a dog. <laughs> um, no, so at work, um, there was a table of older women with kids mm-hmm. um, that I was waiting on. The kids left. They're like, they're like, kids, go play. There's a park right across from where I work. The kids went to play in the park. I was waiting on them. And there was a, like, as soon as the kids left, the sexual tension rose. With the whole table? Yeah, so it was two moms and four kids. I think they had two each. Okay. Kids gone, just me and moms now. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they dismissed the kids, I like came back to check on them, and like sexual, they were flirting with me, dude. They, awesome. They were forty plus year old women flirting with me. Were they attractive? Absolutely. Both of them. Yeah. Do you think they wanted to have a threesome with you? I don't know. I did. I no. There's no way sex was involved. I think it was innocent flirting. But it felt good. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love it. Yeah. When I get flirted with. It was nice. I made a, they did, they just had one drink each and I made a joke about, I was like, anything else? And they're like, oh, I don't think we should. And I was like, oh, so just whiskey shots then? <laughs> yeah, or whatever, you know. Or whatever. To be, yeah. Trying to be funny or cute. And they were like, well, only if you do them with us. And I was like, oh, okay. So then every time I went back and there was like similar banter, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then they, you know, they tipped me about 50%. So I was like, okay, I get you. Fuck yeah. I get you. That's where it's at. I'll flare with the nice. table for 50%. Yeah, no, too. exactly. I, and yeah, that's probably all it was. You know, they're married with kids, but they're like, here is a very obviously handsome, muscular <laughs> um, young man who's waiting on us. So objectively handsome. Objectively. No, there's scientific evidence for it, man. Right, right. Um, person <laughs> waiting on us. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna sound like such a my like, 23 and me says I'm beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> get the that's resu- what mine said. Get it's the like results beautiful. back. It's just like hot, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hot. Mine said attractive, blonde, one percent Asian. Yeah, which is <laughs> mine said almost Neanderthal, one percent Asian. <laughs> that's where I get my little dick. Yours didn't register as here. Where I get my shoulder hair. Just gave back a dog breed. Like, whoa, a lot of German Shepherd in there. That's crazy. <laughs> Some Maltese. Maltese. I, I can't picture that dog. Is it hairy? I think it's like a Shih Tzu, like a small, like a little tiny dog. Dude, mm. I don't know dog breeds at all, but I feel like you're supposed Seems to. Seems like you would. Do you ever get high and watch uh, <laughs> Best in Show? Or the, the dog, the American dog? It's on, it's on everything. Thing? It's on every Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And so they just walk around like all. Oh. Usually not. And higher. then like the oh. judges like fill their balls. Yeah. And run up, rub underneath them and like, this one, this one. And then they. I do watch it. I do win for some reason. I do enjoy. It. I like to compare my dog <laughs> do to those dogs. Be like, you ain't done shit, yeah. bro. Look at you. Yeah. So to put your mutt. dog down. Yeah, I like to be like you're you half have, breed. You don't have what it takes. <laughs> How does your dog feel about you? Do you think he loves you? I don't know. I still pick up his shit, so I think he he's pretty understanding in the role that um, he does whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> it's not mine. It's like my family, <laughs> my parents' dog. You know what I mean? I right. That's what I was going to ask yeah. next. So you're not moving with the dog. No, I don't actually have a dog. I have a dog, but it's like... Family dog? Yeah, 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 exactly. Copy. So you said you don't usually get high on Thanksgiving. That's because you're with your family? I, I, yeah. But also, now that I think about it, if I was with my family on Thanksgiving, we might just get high. That'd be, that'd be fine. Does your family get high? Yeah, yeah. My dad uh, grows some pot. I don't know how incriminating this is. He used Allegedly. to sell it to high schoolers, for sure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually do that. Um, he, yeah, he, he's, he's definitely smoked weed and... Uh, have you yeah. smoked weed with your dad? Oh, yeah. A couple times. Awesome. Was it, like, special the first time? Did it feel like a real bonding experience? or No, it was just kind of weird. I was like, oh, yeah, you've been doing this for... Oh, yeah, you've, like... It was just, like, the understanding of, like, oh, yeah. Obviously, we both just get high, you know? Oh like, God, at this point, we're just both nuts. adults. Is that a bad thing? I thought you killed it. You got to kill your other dog, too? <laughs> Same dog. <laughs> she won't die. She didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> she got a little it's a fucking Deadpool style dog who just regenerates. Yeah, every time I try to kill her, or Phil tries to kill her, I don't kill dogs. It's the <laughs> dog killer here. <laughs> it's weird how much dog like 
um abuse just became a, a topic you know yeah i i like it like the, jacob uh, had dead dog jokes and then i started doing dead dog jokes and then just in general we have dead dog jokes right, right now it's dead dog jokes. i feel like it's coming from you what i'm the or, one or jacob you know i, I think feel jacob like started once it. a couple people start talking about it like i all the comics now bring up like you know this is low key like i said that on stage and now it's just everybody says we all key. influence each other oh way too much there's not there's not that many of us so we all just kind of like it's weird we're all like the combination of each other definitely every person is a combination of all the other people around him right so dave so jacob started doing dead dog jokes and then i was doing dead dog jokes it's nice though because if someone's like Hey, dead dog jokes aren't funny. You could be like, "Well, oh, fucking Jacob started it." Right. <laughs> you know. It's a good call. Just have a finger to point. Always. Is that fair? Always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I well, like having a finger to point when I didn't I'm start it. Saying something super controversial. Yeah. I wanted to make a period sex joke last night, but it wasn't like done, and Jacob's mom was there, like real close to me. It seems hard. So I figured I'd yeah. hold back. Period sex is hard. Uh, yeah. But you can. It doesn't bother me. You can make in it happen. the slightest. I just meant making a joke out of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. That seems like a hard thing to do. I think I got like, a good one. I think I got a good one. Maybe misdirect it quite a bit. Like, uh, oh, that's that's where he's going with that. I have a good period sex joke. That's a fun thing to be able to say out loud and be proud of, too. <laughs> Dude, I've been working on it for a month. Dude, no, this is my crowning achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Up to this point, yeah. It's one of the best things I've done in my life. It's like I was Brian, and then this joke's going to come out, and then it's going to be a new version. Brian 2.0. Yeah. Fucking post-period sex joke brian that's how they're gonna remember just me. way more depressed <laughs> probably i'll probably notice more, more depressed. depressed not depressed i assume that was a standard and it went from there <laughs> oh okay i don't think i'm depressed i i rarely have time to be sad i'm always busy that's good yeah that's i good. agree i rarely have time to be sad <laughs> that's good <laughs> i feel like it's a luxury that's, almost that's the key to antidepressants just <laughs> yeah, do what? enough stuff that you can't be sad well, you can't be emotionally damaged if you don't have feelings. Yep. Pretty much. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> I deal with them. It's called denial. At every right. open mic. That's when I thought get in touch Jeffrey with Dahmer my feelings. Quote. Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah, I thought that was a Jeffrey Dahmer quote. Oh. <laughs> I get in touch with them every open mic? <laughs> no. Before that. Wow. are talking that. about your feelings, not having any. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's usually a sign. Yeah. You don't If you don't feel anything. Just push it Sometimes down. I wish I... I, I get emotional over commercials sometimes. Me too. Like what type of commercial? Like so. sad commercials. Or happy yeah. commercials. Yeah, just like happy, Carl's sad. Jr. is selling a burger for that cheap. He's like, start, <laughs> start bawling. If well, we it's, don't for, if it's for charity. Jr. And yeah. like there's a bald kid that has cancer. And they're like, oh, thanks, Carl's Jr. Buy, for, buy a burger for cancer. Yeah. Or like the commercials where like the kid's not expecting it and their dad comes home from war or something those ones make me cry that's real life too for yeah. real yeah mm -hmm. i agree also stop ruining basketball games with that at halftime <laughs> i kind of agree <laughs> also sarah mclaughlin commercials when i'm high watching cartoons and shit i don't think those are necessary when i was at in wyoming at the the mud racing there was they had like intermission and they were talking about bullying and they brought mm -hmm. this girl up to talk about how she gets bullied Oh man, how bad! And it was just so uncomfortable. She probably gets bullied so much more for talking about how she yeah, gets yeah, because all could just those hear... people have kids and they told their kids about that experience. Like, Yo, this guy. she fucked up the mud races. <laughs> it really brought it down. <laughs> then the announcer's like, "Okay, let's get back to mud racing." <laughs> brought to you by Mountain. <laughs> Pretty much. Brought to you by Mountain Dew Code Red and Bud Light. It was but brought to you by an anti-bullying association. <laughs> the whole thing was anti-bullying, and it was... Don't don't be a bully. I really feel like she's going to get bullied more. This was Wyoming. And you oh, can just, like, hear the... Strap the a gun to that like kid's the, waist. Oh, yeah. The whispers. I bet like, bully... Dude, I bet there's less bullies in Wyoming, because you're like, he might have a gun in his car. He probably has a gun in his my, car. Uh, my, Kate, or my, my cousin Kaylee told us that the, somebody... A group of people took a, a gay guy out and, oh. like, tied him to a fence and killed him. And in like, Wyoming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard about that story. Like, really? Uh, it's the Matthew Shepard mm -hmm. was the guy's name. Yeah. I believe. It's supposed to be. You know, There's a good big. chance I'm wrong on that. But I've done... That sounds right. I've done a show um, to benefit the Matthew Shepard Foundation. Awesome. So I Googled it, and that's how I learned about it. Hmm. It was, like, a fundraiser. But I've also heard, apparently... Uh, there were there's like drug it was also partially drug related like mm. he, he might have owed them money or something that I don't think it was pure homophobia that's maybe 
but also maybe it was. Either way, potentially he, he blew them all for drugs. Yeah, they're like that's. And then he was like, oh, again. he's gonna tell somebody. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, he's like, I'll tell everybody you're gay. So they killed him. <laughs> Fuck, that's so dark. That is horrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's start funny, laughing. I'm glad I'm you said that's yeah, funny though. <laughs> um, yeah, that's you know just probably don't kill people either way. Yeah, agreed. Especially it's over a ideology that makes no sense whatsoever. Wouldn't that be funny if they like in court? That's their testimony. They're like, it's not a hate crime. We didn't kill him because he's gay. We killed him because he owed us money. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, but you still killed a person, right? Yeah, but not because he's gay. <laughs> like, I'm not a murder murderer and a homophobe. Mm. Just a murderer. That's good. I would I would respect that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a, a little bit of that in there. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. If they're probably homophobic. It's better if they're not though. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, that's a shitty thing to happen. I, I kind of understand violence based on owing somebody money. You know? Yeah. I definitely was at a point in my life, or there was a point in my life that that was a possibility. I don't think we were ever going to kill anybody. Never kill. We're going to like maybe hit tear his clothes off and just like stomp him to a fence. We're going to stomp on his big toe. <laughs> <laughs> we probably were just going to go over there and peacock. Yeah, act, act exactly. tougher than we actually but are. That's the problem. It just starts to escalate. You're like, we'll beat you up, and he's like, I'll beat you up, and then you're like, well, what, fuck, I'll fuck you. And he's like, well, I'll fuck you, and then you guys. <laughs> Make sweet love, you know how it escalates in that way. Best case scenario, yeah, that's how it happens in the movies. Yeah, yeah. the ones that I watch or have seen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Pornhub suggested yeah, sometimes. You know, um, I get curious. I look up a lot of threesome porn. Yeah, sometimes other things come up, and I'm like, hmm, not yet. I'm not ready yet. For I'll, sure, I go find that what makes me happy. But there's that curiosity. It's you know? threesomes don't make it. Dude, porn came up so fast. How long have we been? Is there a, uh, like a time? I wish. I, <laughs> when do we start? <laughs> thirteen minutes. Okay, yeah. Until yeah. till porn. Within thirteen minutes, we covered murder, homophobia, and porn. I'm just curious. <laughs> Dude, sorry if I was too critical last time I was on here. By the way, too. That's Were you critical? Was I? I don't no. know. I might have been. I thought it was funny. I was just questioning the whole, you know, and that's just kind of like who I am as a person. I'm like, what's what is this? I think that's what we talked about. What is this thing that I'm a part of? It's weird. So it's kind of in first. my nature, but then I just did it live on your podcast. So I was like, yeah, that'll show them. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry if I was too critical, but I know you, I know you guys better now. I, I trust you guys. You um, should. We're very trustworthy people. Yeah. I trust you guys would use this podcast um, to end my career is what I was going to say. I, I would I feel like if like something his, makes you look bad, I will cut it out and put it on YouTube <laughs> like I did yeah, with yeah. Jacob. Yeah, that's what you want. Testicle infection. I dropped that video on his birthday. <laughs> 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 Unintentionally, but it's a happy accident. I've never had anything bad happen with my dick or balls. Like, I've never had an infection or anything like scary. Do you know the hardest you got hit in the dick and balls? Though? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, when, I remember I was a younger, few I occasions. kicked in the nuts. Yeah, by yeah. a girl when I was like six. The food is always a girl that kicks a guy in the nuts. So my balls probably hadn't even really dropped yet. Yeah, it still hurt like shit. Yeah. Unintentionally, it was mostly pelvic bone probably. Right. Unintentionally <laughs> getting <laughs> hit in the nuts, like a football or Ooh. something, or you just roll over wrong in the morning. Dude, that that's if real. If it's cold, if it's cold out, and you just, and you're playing any sport and it, anything hits you in the dick at all, or balls, it hurts so bad. Yeah. It's so uncool how bad that hurts. Why is that? Shouldn't we have evolved to not have that hurt so bad by now? Well, they sh they sh come up into you a little bit. Yeah. To try to protect themselves. No, I know they do, but mine are still so low. I feel you. You dude. know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking size, I, ca I cased it on a jump in a BMX race one time. Oh. And went forward and hit my balls right on the, the handlebar and the whole, that's the a whole good one. column. I did that in eighth. I was pretty Dude, bad. that's exactly what I hit. Did it bleed? You ever had a scab so. on your balls? I don't Ooh, think so. You don't have a scab I've, on your balls. I've definitely had flesh wounds on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> my I've grandpa tried stuff. to unload a riding lawnmower by himself, and it landed on him, and he broke his urethra. Oh. And everybody was calling him broke dick. <laughs> you don't want to have a broken Gram urethra. Grandpa broke dick. <laughs> <laughs> grandpa broke dick. That's nice. Yeah. And then someday, I mean, your grandson broke dick. Mm. I feel like the family name carries on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, broke dick junior. Also, but I haven't broke my dick, so it doesn't why'd you have matter. flesh wounds on your dick? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's uh, get back to that. <laughs> Shit like that. I thought, are you trying to use this podcast to pick up girls? Did I feel like that's mm -hmm. what you guys talked about? No, oh, it was the opposite thing. Every time anyone's heard this podcast, yep, it's ended. Definitely, dude. I hope you find a girl someday that's like, I love your podcast. <laughs> I feel like that's not. She'd be psychotic. Like a green light. She yeah. might yeah. be weird. Yeah. yeah. I, not a green light. Not a green light weekend situation. 
see for a weekend okay but like for a long-term thing but gotcha. when you get Brent's the crazy trying to ones, find a somebody weekend to put a seed in green light weekend, not a green light. He wants a, a beautiful, tall Norwegian baby. Oh man, hmm. freaking Iceland versus Canada, <laughs> U.S. women's soccer today. Oh shit, those what were, happened? Those were I don't know. Doesn't matter. That? They're both gorgeous, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Was it even? Was it sports? It doesn't matter. I'm coming across as sexist, I believe. Ah, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. If someone's listening to this, athletes are beautiful. Yeah, in a lot of cases. Yeah, I respected them because they were beautiful human beings. Right. <laughs> I can't be sexist if I'm uh, like half gay. And a lot of times, it's just not Fair as enough. fun to watch Duh. women's sports. Y- yeah, well, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yes, it was like, whoa, no. she, it was like, whoa, I agree. She, <laughs> she totally, ki- not. she totally kicked it. It's but impressive, like women's snowboarding. I'm still impressed by women's soccer. I know there's no way I could do it. You know, I used to be naive and be like, women's soccer, I can do. All right, high school women's soccer is garbage. That's one of the <laughs> I could worst. put a wig on. But that, those the, chicks the women's World Cup is actually like they're fucking so good at soccer. That it's impressive. If you're an average human being, it's worth watching because they're doing things you absolutely cannot do. For sure. If you watch high school women's soccer, and you're just a guy, you can do what they're doing. Any any guy. <laughs> yeah. If you're just a, if you're a per- yeah. Any guy, you could take eleven random dudes. But they would beat any women high school women's soccer team. The best one in the country, eleven dudes beat that team. The U.S. women's national team, they're fucking. It's very. Impressive. They'd lose by one. Very impressive. <laughs> would absolutely annihilate that team of eleven random dudes. It'd be embarrassing for them. But I digress. Women's, Where are you getting these eleven you, you dudes? Get, like the Midwest or like Durango? Dude, it's just a general sample. Okay. It's over three hundred million people in the United States. Just, just 11, 11 dudes. of that yeah of that 11 adult males what's the percent of obesity rate like in, in the country? <laughs> pretty, i think it's pretty high that's fine dude you stick in that America. guy in goal it's like half the team right okay. you stick the obese guy in goal odds are you also probably got a black guy in there there's your forward so you're set you got a fat guy with a, a bit of luck a mexican a dude guy oh actually yeah you're probably gonna want that more than the brazil black guy. yeah any any south america just a brazilian american guy they're pretty good at this yeah is, uh, yeah just choke it falls out on the sock. Did, <laughs> did you know Rose Jiu-jitsu Nama Yunus is in town? In Durango? Yeah. I did not Who? know that. Rose Nama Yunus was the former women's 115 pound UFC champion. Oh shit. Bad is she, bitch. Is she from Farmington? No. No. She's in she's Denver, I believe, right? I could be wrong. She I think that's where she trains, but I don't know originally where she's from. Me neither. But she's super hot UFC fighter. She's married, most likely with her terrifying husband. And you think what do you think happens if they fight? Her and her husband. I bet she, she kicks him in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't seem like the one to fight in a relationship, you know? She's a really she's so nice, sweet. Yeah. She's really sweet. She's I like knew we were gonna sweetest, go down this goddamn sweetest road. badass girl ever. You knew she was gonna come up? Well, I planned on saying she was in Durango, but right. is she, I knew what it was, is she here in Durango for? I don't know. She posted a video this morning and Jody Foster Matrix sent it to us. Huh. She definitely kills any of us, right? Like oh, literally. Totally. For sure. Literally dies. All three yeah. of us. Yeah. I got soft hands. I'm not good at punching. Huh. So I feel like that's in my that's not in my favor. I saw you doing some pretty impressive stuff on the bars outside the Henry Strader Theater one night. Yeah, but it didn't hurt my hands that bad. Right. <laughs> I actually did kind of hurt my hands. <laughs> so soft my hands. It definitely hurt fuck. your knuckles to get into a fight. Yeah. Lights yeah. are no good. It's actually probably better to open hand palms so you don't break your knuckles. Yeah. Didn't just slap the shit out of somebody. Didn't Jacob Jonas Even and if Josh you, Emerson? If you just front paw somebody in the nose, you can still fucking break it. Yeah. You hurt pretty good. And you're not going to break your knuckles as easy. You'll probably get a little bit more force hitting with your knuckles, but all depends. Risk reward. Yeah. Yeah. Therein lies the so issue. So I carry a gun. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt your hand at all. Right. Well, actually, like a little, like if the, the like a little bit of the shock, like ow, oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> no. <When> the, <laughs> murderer, but he's also like, ah, I have soft hands. <laughs> you guys have lotion after you just shot somebody. <laughs> that would be funny for a skit, like a a hitman, but he's also like super feminine. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, so like all right, you're gonna go up to the fifteenth story hotel room and you're gonna shoot this guy. He gets there, he's like, oh, I feel like the design of the rooms on the fourteenth floor. <laughs> was a little nicer so i dropped down for my assassination <laughs> it's actually a pretty uh uh similar character in the show barry on hbo is like a super effeminate like assassin yeah. dude it's bill Hader, right well bill Hader's the main character yeah but there's like a super feminine like hitman dude nice that is 
like what you just said i saw him in my head that's good i like the looks like the incongruity of that character it's, it's fun it's like oh okay my gun bag doesn't match my jacket so i don't know if this assassination is even gonna happen today <laughs> very similar i'm telling you that's it. awesome you should watch it yeah it's good i have not seen it <sighs> it's a good one mm. i watched a fucked up movie the other day what was it it's called contagion mm. contagion contagious Something contracted. That's what it was. That sounds scary. It was like a sexually transmitted disease that this girl gets. <laughs> it was a documentary about herpes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I've had dreams like this. <laughs> at the end, at the end of the movie, basically, it's like the beginning of a zombie virus. Like this chick like turns into a zombie, but it all started from a sex sexually transmitted disease. Makes sense. That's like, like how are we overlooking that? And then she bangs this dude, and then like maggot starts coming out of her pussy. It, while they're banging, and then he's like, ah, oh, then she turns. Is it hot? No, not at all. It's disgusting. Something the whole rough. time you're like, because she starts like slowly degrading and her eye gets all fucked up and she's like. Oh, while they're freaking banging. Freaking out. No, like through the whole movie. Oh. And she's, and she's like getting, getting progressively dead. worse. But is it hot the first time they bang for a little bit? You're like, okay. No, not at all. Until the maggots? Because you know that the maggots are probably going to come out because it like yeah. foreshadowed during the whole movie that oh. there was maggots coming out of her. Yeah, that's how like it starts. Was, it's plus, just you like, told us about it, so if we watch it now, we're gonna be like, no. Yeah, well, at However that point, we, if if it's hot, you're like, yeah, maybe like, a necrophilia because she's looks like she's fucking dying. Oh, okay. Like, how's she like, still getting dick? Yeah, who's because this, this it's this dude that loved her forever, and oh, she's finally like, rough. I'm gonna bang. Because the whole movie, it's a Forrest she's Gump like, situation. She thinks she's a lesbian, and she's trying to hook up with this one chick, and then. uh what does this movie stand for? What I don't know. I don't know why. I just I couldn't stop watching it because I wanted to go and want to know where it was, I was going. I was hoping I'd get some. The whole time I was just like, Ugh, it was gross. It was horrible. I try not to go down those roads. Yeah, sometimes it happens. I th- I think we're overlooking that as a possibility for a zombie apocalypse. It makes so much more sense for a town like this. Like that's <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> It's just like, what, yeah, everybody assumes... It's either cocaine or an STD. Yeah, they assume the, the zombie virus is going to be transmitted through biting. Obviously, it's going to be transmitted through sex. What? Way At the end of the movie, she started biting people like zombies. Okay. Yeah. So That she seems like just, a really natural progression. I'm a big fan but, of... Yeah, blood, the pro- semen. ...progression yeah. of that. Yeah. That's what transmits things. Okay. Yeah. That, it's, yeah. it's thought out. Instead that of, freaks me out. Like Ebola... Like, cannibalistic zombies they're just like <laughs> jerking off on people's zombies like we got you you're like we came on you so take that and you're like oh, i guess i gotta go come on people now fuck zombies <laughs> running around fucking people just, yeah, yeah oh. we haven't seen that movie yet i bet it's out there i think we're onto something though I bet let's look it up a- zombie porn I'm not gonna do it <laughs> I feel like we should pre-screen that before we bust it out on a podcast. Yeah. What did we look up last time I was here? Something weird. Was it pterodactyl porn? Was it? Dude, I feel like it was. We watched it on the podcast before. I feel like it was absolutely pterodactyl Did you see this helicopter rescue video? Oh, well, the chick just spins. Yeah, the chick spins, like, really fast. Bruh. I think, like, all her blood vessels popped and shit. Really? Yeah. Look, do you die if that happens? She didn't die. She's She's alive. 74 years old. Oh, yeah, I can move it over there. Do they see the screen? There's no. Is there no. like? There's nobody. Okay. We could we could make it happen to just take technical expertise. Yeah, I didn't know the camera. So I know people know the video we're talking about. Where she? Yeah, that's she's how the starts, works. She starts off good. Yeah, and she's she seems, fine. It seems like the, she's so close right I'm now. Like, all right, we're good. We got her. We got her. And then she. Oh no, that's light. She. Oh, uh, it gets. Dude, yeah, it gets she light. starts pulling like twelve G's. Like Dude, astronaut trading. Why are they lowering her down? That seems they're trying worse. to get it to stabilize. Yeah, and, and they were like, maybe if we put her back on the ground, and the opposite's happening. Smokes into <laughs> a rock. <It's> like, <laughs> Dude. Uh, oh shit, she's going faster. She's like a we- <laughs> Dude. She's going so fast. It's, it's like, like a weed whacker blade. Did you just trim the shrub- trim the shrubs with her? She looks like she's going as fast as the propellers. Yeah, bro. Just okay. Accidentally hit a cactus show, show, or something. Show, show. And then they just fucking fly off. They're like, well, cut cut the rope. <laughs> cut it. Cut it. I don't know what else to do. We got to get her to the hospital. <laughs> it's a lost cause. Cut it. Well, there's like pilot audio and he's like, I, she has to be passed out by now. Yeah. She's unconscious. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
ah, just imagine a 74 year old woman she's yelling dude you uh, dude i feel like you would just go blind for some reason she's like oh okay i never see again yeah she just i wonder if it was wind it looks like they moved to try and get her out of a windy scenario and I now read a, i read a comment from a guy who was a helicopter pilot and he said there was another there's another cable that attaches to it that sp- keeps it from doing that that stabilizes it yeah and they didn't have that cable attached to whatever the basket yeah don't, i guess don't it, helicopter pilots have like paracord and shit usually you know just anything know. seems like it'd work rope would be fine right rope would be enough to stop her from spinning like that <laughs> but what if it didn't though and then she's just all tangled up in rope too like oh it's amazing shit. that she's alive yeah honestly fuck yeah for that lady hell yeah hey way to not die in a tragic rescue i mean i guess right she's better off than she was because she was needing an emergency rescue so they probably know, she did just like broke her ankle save her life <laughs> or something <laughs> it's probably she was just hiking. she just got a little dehydrated yeah. and then they're like well <laughs> <laughs> yeah i spin this out of you it was like a rescue from the desert but obviously Dude, she probably got up. She's like, oh, it reminds me of college. <laughs> She's so been there. It's weird if they were just like, you know what? We don't have any extra seats in the helicopter. <laughs> we're going to need you to ride the bag. <laughs> so underprepared. They're, was that their first rescue ever? Like, it might start to spin. Oh, we'll be fine if it starts to spin. They like zoned out that part of the lesson. It's going to be real windy. What did they say to do if it starts to spin? <laughs> cut her. Cut her. <laughs> <laughs> just boom <laughs> Whew, we almost lost her yeah <laughs> yeah that, right and who was taking the video another, another helicopter, another helicopter. Oh. <laughs> just a news helicopter oh news helicopter i was like why did they just throw her in the van They're like so- what <laughs> <laughs> watch the daring rescue you think a new th- oh, yeah the news helicopter was probably like oh fuck they're fucking that up <laughs> oh that's like the best day of their life they're like any more helicopters around it's just us we got this we gotta see her did she throw up you think i bet she threw up i, just, I bet she passed out pretty quick yeah just, uh, she she like, have, do we know anything about was she already she might have already been unconscious right if she needed a rescue yeah i don't know i, I don't feel know like much. any other situation she could just sit in the helicopter somebody put her in that bag you know, she right. like she didn't just crawl in there while the helicopter was hovering and zip herself up. Oh, yeah. Like, Why didn't they just... Can You You can't just land helicopters anywhere, though, right? Well, who put her in the bag? Did somebody drop down? There might have been yeah. paramedics there what? already or, or rangers, people yeah. on the ground. Man, I wish I, I really knew. don't know. Dude, I'm so dumb. I don't know how anything works, you know, right? Why would they put her... Just, if I ever just try and think something through, I'm like, oh, there's so much I don't understand about Maybe the world. Maybe she did put herself in there. I doubt it. Right. The reason you the reason you'd use a helicopter 74. over a car it looked like she was on like a hiking trail. So you yeah, could have got there like by car. Stranded in the desert, probably. I think. Yeah, but I'm sure it's like on a trail. She wasn't just like right. hundreds of miles away from things. She <laughs> just was probably in the basket. Just, yeah, she was probably like a couple miles away from her car, right? And she got hurt or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I imagine the reason they use a helicopter instead of an ambulance is because it's faster. Or yeah, either yeah, accessibility or, or it's faster to fly to the hospital than it is to drive to the hospital. I wonder if they've like released a statement where they're like, "Sorry." I think there has been, but I've just seen please, so many military movies don't rest. Wait, where they just it? lay them in the helicopter. But I know at Purgatory, like if you need assistance down the mountain. Like they put, you have to lay in the sled behind the guy on skis. Like that's how you get down the mountain. If you, if you're scared or whatever, that's how you get down the mountain is like in the sled behind. Yeah. So I wonder if they have a rule. They're like, if you're injured, <laughs> you need a ride. Going in the sled. Going in the back. Yeah. Dude, think about this. She probably had to pay so much for that. The lady was just a bitch the whole time. <laughs> well, trying, I think she's trying to get suing. rescued. They're like I getting think I basket. Heard that. She is suing. Yeah. Cause like all her blood vessels popped and like. Man, I thought that I, I thought they released their statement to like, dude. As long as we say sorry, she won't sue. <laughs> but she probably she probably uh, paid a lot for that, right? I mean, or at least sued for damages. You know? Yeah, yeah. that's fair. I am she not get, paying for that ride. She should get back it was whatever. Ten thousand dollar ride from the desert to the hospital. Yeah, yeah what is it? It's like eleven hundred dollars to get just like just to get in an ambulance, right? Yeah, when Coel had an allergic reaction, she stopped at Walmart, and from Walmart to the hospital was two grand to ride in the ambulance. Right, which you could have walked in almost the same amount of time, probably. Yeah, she was. She wasn't breathing. Yeah, but still, you could have walked it that far. They're close. <laughs> dude, they're close. Just throw her on your shoulder. <laughs> like, hey, let me just. I wasn't there. She was driving, oh, yeah. so she had to pull over because she terrifying. couldn't see, and she couldn't breathe. <clears throat> and she called the ambulance. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah, I can't see and I can't breathe. 
It'll be two grand. Never mind. I'll find my way there. <laughs> if she, if they would have told her that, she probably would have got back in the car and tried to drive. Give no. me a compass. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll tell you that shit after, for sure. Like, have you ever been, like, super fucked up in the hospital, like, injured? No. Like, I crashed my dirt bike once, and I, like, broke my collarbone and cracked ribs and got a gnarly concussion and just, I punctured a lung. I was all fucked up. Yeah. And, like, while I was there, on painkillers, concussed. Like, couldn't drive myself home. They were like, we're going to need you to sign this bill. Just like, Jesus. And you're like, okay. You weren't like, I'd like to have a lawyer here for this. Mm. Which you just like, what? it's either that or I'll just like die or, I was like or be hurt forever. 18, 19. Yeah. Somewhere around there. I will say I got the flu and it was cost like $800. Because you had to stay in the hospital? No, I just, I was like, man, this seems like it's worse than the flu. I better go. I better go check it out. Like, I, I don't know. I was like, maybe I'd be a bowler or some shit. Right. <laughs> it's just been way too long with way too high of a fever. And I got in. They're like, yep. Looks like you got the flu. It's pretty bad. It's pretty strong this year. There's nothing really we can do about it. Yeah. You so just, they, just take they didn't this. even give me an IV. They gave me ibuprofen. Like, this should break your fever. I was like, what the fuck? It's $800. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the hospital for like an hour total. Jesus Christ. I like, yeah. think I spent longer than that getting my STD test. And that was $54. <laughs> Oh, can you put a price on knowing you have AIDS though? Put it there. Nice. <laughs> nice. Did you say that about Jonas last night? No, it I didn't say he had dicks. AIDS. I just said, yeah, I just said he sucks dicks. And he's like, I'm not pounding that. Well, okay, well, you're a liar then. <laughs> For sure. That's what. I, that's how I feel about it. How you, how you like in stand up, man? Last time I was on here was like after one of your first times ever, right? Probably. Yeah, like, I don't remember. You probably you definitely done less than ten. The first time yeah. I came on here. How you feeling now? I love it. You're dude. one. You're one of us. We got you. Thanks, man. Got him. Are you gonna are you gonna be in film? Like you're one of us. I'm leaving. Me too. Can we move here? <laughs> now that we got you in, I'm gonna go away forever, dude. I say I'm leaving. Last time I left Durango, I came back within like six weeks. So, really? Yeah. You're not gonna do that. I'll be here in August. No, no. Oh, I didn't like, copy. move back. Yeah. I just it'll be a part of my life coming to Durango for a long time. Nice. Too good of a town. I know too many people here to just. It's a cool place. Yeah, I'm not gonna vanish out of Durango. I'll make quarterly trips probably i'll come down a couple times a year nice made that drive a lot of people do that i've seen a lot of people leave but still come back yeah why would you not it's beautiful i never go to farmington i drive around farmington to get to my parents house (laughs) it makes a lot of sense but i never avoid farmington i actively avoid it like with everything i have let's gotta go to best buy or petco i heard i didn't realize farmington had a target Mm -hmm. yeah it's right on this side too. And the Kmart, it's very convenient. Yeah, yeah. I used to sell a lot of weed at that Kmart. At that Kmart, Kmart I think Kmart's Park, gone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, pretty positive it's still there. I, I have not been that deep think, into Farmington. Dude, I don't think Kmart exists. I think as it's a the store anymore. only Kmart in the world. I think Kmart <laughs> like went out of business ever. <laughs> There's Maybe one it's guy who has a department now. store. He's like, I guess I can call it Kmart now. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'd want. It's to a start local a business. Business with that reputation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure Kmart doesn't exist. But also. Hmm. Don't read that often. So you didn't know Farmington had a Target, right? Yeah, and they've had it for since I've been alive. I guess I just assumed Farmington didn't have a Target. I'd never been to it, so I was like, "There's no way." It's probably the worst Target ever, right? No, it's pretty nice. It's usually, where all the hot chicks in Farmington are. It's a normal Target. It's much better than shopping at Walmart. I'll yeah, tell you that. yeah, I agree. I wish kind of wish Durango had a Target. I feel like we're kind of trashy because we don't have a Target. You think? Yeah, but I don't know where you would put it. Well, Three Springs probably. I really, yeah, it's probably coming soon. Honestly, I think that was what was going to go over there. Now really? that I'm thinking about it, they should replace the entire Durango Mall, like the not the downtown one, but like the one with Bed Bath and Beyond. They should just replace all of that. A Target with a Target, yeah, <laughs> or a nuclear bomb. They could just bomb it. <laughs> or a Trader Seems Joe's. Aggressive. Yeah, I live pretty close. Maybe maybe not a bomb and like maybe a Trader Joe's. Something yeah, cool like that. I do like Trader Joe's. Target with the Trader Joe's inside. Do they have those yet? They make that breed of mm. store. <laughs> well, I think it's a big enough place. You could re- that could be where the strip club goes. Then Target. Maybe like the private weed club. That's what Just we're missing. Just have to have super good ventilation. Like Target. Is that a thing? Trader Joe's. Weed clubs? Are those real? Yeah. In, in other cities? Yeah, I think Denver has one. Hmm. So you just, know. There, you just, there was and then there wasn't hmm. and then but I bet I bet there is now. You can just go in there and smoke weed like yeah. over the counter like you same way you would buy a beer. I at think a bar. you might have to bring your own weed. I don't know. Yeah, it's like a club. Oh like no! A membership. 
like the Lions Club or whatever. Okay. But if you just owned a dispensary next door, right? That seems like the business plan. Yeah, and you're like, no, we don't sell weed in. They have to go next door, buy it, and then walk in. Right. Which is just, it's almost stupid that the law exists because it's just mildly inconvenient for people to like just let it be the same building. Yeah, and tourist coming in, they have no place to smoke other than their hotel and a lot of like hotel. a park. Yeah, which, which is. Like, Parks are nice. Like, yeah, but it's so illegal. Nice, but you're gonna get arrested. Yeah, for tourists. Oh, you gotta be no. good at it. It just sucks for tourists. You know, it's like this big tourist if you, thing now. And if you went to Denver as a tourist, smoked weed in a park, and got arrested for it, you were being so goddamn stupid, right? Yeah, being real dumb. You were, yeah, you were, you were causing trouble. You or the cops have. just a dick. Or they're smoking in their car. Yeah, or yeah, or you're a minority. Either you're being really <laughs> stupid, or you're not white. <laughs> It's very true, unfortunately. I was thinking Sorry. about all the Sorry. white Texans <laughs> Sorry. that I see around town buying weed. For sure. Those and people. Where do you think they're smoking weed? Probably in, in their, their car. car. Yeah. And then driving high with zero tolerance. Or the hotel. That would be cool to make, make a whole weed resort where you closed off the whole thing and it's 21 and older. That'd be sweet. Taco Bell's like, got a hotel. Why not weed? Why not make it the same? Taco goddamn. Bell has a hotel? Yeah. Taco Bell has a hotel? Yeah. The Taco that. Bell Hotel? Saw that in the thing I almost read. A headline on an article that I thought about reading. Are you sure it wasn't like <laughs> two different articles that you blended together? Maybe. One no. was about Taco Bell. One was about a prostitute getting murdered yeah, at there's, a there's hotel. Yeah, an article about a hotel while <laughs> while I was like trying to order Taco Bell online super high. Like, yeah. No, dude, they have a hotel, man. It's crazy. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure Taco the Bell. Taco Bell Resort. Dude, I think that's what it's called. I think Taco Bell has a resort. Do you know where it is? Yeah, it's in California. Oh. And the shit slide. But they <laughs> <laughs> This is a diarrhea slide. Um, but they should just have weed at the same resort, save a step. For sure. Or just put it next door. Or you could just have like a section of it that's 21 and over, you know? It makes so much goddamn sense, but everybody's scared of it still. Like, oh my God, we're going to, people can't be smoking weed in bars. Everybody's going to be fucked up and. Yeah. I mean, I just say if it's after like 10 o'clock, don't arrest people for smoking weed outside of bars with people smoking cigarettes. Yeah, they're going to arrest people for drinking outside, too. Outside I guess, the bar. dude. Yeah, I didn't realize how much like prohibition exists on alcohol still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just let... Especially in different states and counties yeah. and, like, real... Albuquer- like, in New Mexico, you can't buy weed on... Or, uh, can't buy weed on Sunday. <laughs> That's yeah. not true. Or Monday, you, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't buy alcohol on Sunday. I think just before noon. noon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a brewery in Albuquerque. They have a two beer maximum. Really? Yeah. Is it on reservation land? I don't think so. I heard it was. In, I heard it was just in Albuquerque. A guy was telling me about it at work no. today. Because there's definitely reservation land like drink limits. Yeah. That give you like a bracelet, and you're only allowed to have so many drinks, like in the casino here. Yeah, and again, that's one of those things where it's like they think they're changing it, but it's really just mildly inconvenient. You're like, cool. Mm. And I have to carry scissors with me when I drink because I have to cut off these stupid bracelets every time I get two punches on it. Just pocket or full of shooters. Yeah. You're just I don't drinking know. Like, outside in your car. People are going to do it. So stop trying <clears> to <throat> s- change how people do That's it. That's why, yeah, like a Make weed, a weed resort to... would be so fucking cool. And yeah. if it was legal, everybody, there would already be big giant weed resorts. But there's so much fucking red tape that you have to yeah. get through with weed right now. It's still really new. It's yeah. Really been and, and I get wanting to make sure you do it right, do it safe. It's been, yeah. like, but because people, stupid people, ruin it for everybody. Yeah, just, oh. I think just in general, tell people what to do less. I'm not really mad at like most of the alcohol laws. I feel like if you could just walk around Durango with a beer, there would be <coughs> broken glass everywhere. You think? Yeah, dude. Drunk people, especially Texans, like not to be any tourist. Like yeah. I feel like a lot of locals are pretty. There's trash cans fucking everywhere, dude. Yeah. It's not hard to throw your goddamn trash the away, but there's still trash on all the over. river walk is there's just alcohol bottles everywhere. Yeah. Like you go for a run on the river walk now and you can just see because that's where they're hiding bananas and drinking. And like, I think yeah. if you could just drink downtown, that would be the case too. Yeah. There'd just be liquor everywhere downtown? Or liquor Maybe. bottles. But trash. what if Vegas isn't that bad? There's yeah. more like what if when you legalize escort it, cards than there is alcohol bottles in Vegas and you can walk that's around. That's fair. Yeah. I think I don't think I, maybe when you legalized it, like legalized drinking downtown, you wouldn't people get people polluting the river trail because mm-hmm. people would just drink on Main Street and then like you said, Main Street's covered with trash cans. 
think if, if you give the, the chance to, they might be. I don't know. I don't know. There's a there's less a trash specula- cans on the river trail for you sure. Give a lot adults of the chance to be adults, and you be surprised. Like you, there's got definitely gonna be douchebags. I kind of I like the idea if that was the case, like a certain hour, you know, like I I guess Vegas is. But Vegas is fucking Vegas. Like, you take your kids down the strip in Vegas, you should know what to expect. That's on you. You know, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. But Durango, I felt like if after nine you could walk around with a beer or something, I yeah. don't know. That but seems fair. Just, just become the zombie crawl every night at midnight. That'd be awesome. There's just people down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Everybody just leaves the, dr- the bars with their drink at a certain time at night. Just... Whose streets? Our streets. Dude, that fucking... A lot of plastic cups. I haven't done that in a long time. Probably the last few years. Yelled that or gone to the zombie Gone to the zombie walk thing. I go down there. It's so much easier to get a cab before that. Yeah. Or during it. (laughs) Just just watch May. I just like to watch. I don't know. I never get that drunk for it, but I like to watch mayhem unfold. It's fun to be like, oh, look at that guy. He's probably on his way to get tased pretty soon. (laughs) Yeah. I've been borderline blackout during the zombie crawl. Yeah. Didn't drive nothing illegal, you know? Yeah. I guess drunk in public, but the zombie crawl kind of seems like your free pass. That's the whole like idea behind it, right? We all just get so drunk and walk in public at the same time. There's no way they can arrest all of us, Mm -hmm. but they can still pick out a few who are like a little excessive. Yeah. (laughs) The cops just line the road and just look everybody in the eye. So that always that guy that gets on like a street post. Or something like that. That's who they're looking for. Fair enough. He's that a guy. The guy who just climbs up, grabs one, grabs one of those down. <laughs> <laughs> that that was me. Wait, did you actually steal no. that from someone? Like, that doesn't even look real. That came from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, is that a bong next to it? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. A three foot bong. Mm-hmm. It's too much. Did you see this one? <laughs> yeah, but that's only a two foot bong. Copy. Um, weak, soft. <laughs> um, but you co- So you, you love comedy Is what you're saying Yeah dude. I, I asked you, but I, You answered But then I wanted to talk about it more but we got That's off, fine we got I wanted to talk about your comedy too Yeah But yeah I talented. really love comedy You are Pretty talented Unreasonably talented No um, That's good I'm glad I'm glad you're into it It's really fun man I've been telling Super new stuff Like since yeah. I've been back from Tennessee I've peppered it with like a joke at the end That, I, yeah. that I've used previously It's almost like problem solving mm, It definitely you, is You can look at it like a puzzle Like what can I do that works And what can I change to make stuff work I enjoy that aspect of it I think I've always kind of liked Figuring stuff out And it's totally one of the things Where you just have to go out there and figure it out mm-hmm. People can give you whatever advice Or write or You can learn how to write comedy or whatever But you Nothing compares to the trial and error process. Totally. Go out there multiple times a week, try it, figure it out. Yeah, I've tried most of my older jokes, like at every environment, and I've kind of gotten a feel for where they work better. And I don't know, I'm I'm excited to be writing more stuff. You know, the Henry Strader yeah. Theater thing was like, I felt like that was a good time to just kind of put some of this on the shelf. Like some yeah. of it was pretty sharp. But it's just like the same shit every night, you know? Yeah. So I'll use a part of it, you know, a part of my set to just like throw in here or there yeah. just so I have a strong closer or yeah. if I feel like I need to get them back in the middle or something. That's good. That's a good way to look at it. It's good. Good that you've learned to do that. that. That's a hard skill. Well. To figure out under what circumstances to use what jokes. I've had no laughs right. for five minutes. <laughs> Right. That feels really bad. I'm familiar. I which is usually feel. like three minutes, 45 seconds because I'd puss out because I was... Yeah. Like, when I came in, it was like pretty okay. I was getting laughs, getting laughs. So, and then people are like, all right, you're familiar now. Tell me a joke, bitch. Dude, there's but, pretty much always... That is, there's always that uh, newbie high. Mm-hmm. Anytime you say it's your first set ever. That's what I tell everybody. Everybody cheers. They're like, oh, it's his first... You could do whatever. You could, you could just... And they'll laugh. Yeah, because it's your first time. They want you to succeed. And then you ride that high for a couple weeks, and then you just... Unless you go and kill Tony your first time, and you do horrible, and then right. they roast oh, yeah, the yeah, fuck no, yeah. This you, is, and you're like, this is best horrible, case. Best, <laughs> best case is it's your first time, someone introduces you as your first time, and you get laughs because everybody wants you to succeed. Yeah. That's true. Worst case, someone's like, give it up for whoever, like, yeah, yeah, it could go way worse than that, and then you just eat shit, and everybody makes fun of you to your face for it. <laughs> That's that's worse. They the give worst me a little leeway if 
you say it's your first time on Kill Tony. They're yeah. Like, well, it was your first time, and then they'll actually give you tips. But it's the people that are like three years. They're like, Jesus, that was terrible. You should figure it out. That's the whole thing where it's like, figure it out. What have you been doing for the last three years? You've been figuring anything out? Right. If you're still absolute shit? Well, and even like once a month is not, doesn't do it. You know what I mean? Doing like, comedy once a month? Yeah, man. Oh, if you're doing comedy once a month, you're not like a comedian, right? Right. Well, you're which just is not- fine. You're 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 a hobby comic, which is be whatever you want. And I love them, and we have a couple, you know, and yeah. they're funny as shit. But every time I see them, I'm like, I feel like I've progressed, and they've barely progressed. You know, like they yeah. learned from one set rather than eight. Yeah, you know? well, you're just not or, practicing. You're not getting better. Right. Which is fine, dude. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. Find whatever level of yeah success you want to. That's one of the things I've been working with with like the album coming out. Is like what like are you proud of what you did? Totally. Because I mean, that's really all it's about. Like, did you set a goal to do something, work hard to achieve it, and then you're gonna move on and set another goal and do something else? Probably. I feel like I did with that. Yeah. But and that's you're... that's all creativity is. If you're if you're any sort of creator, mm-hmm. that's all you're doing is stuff just just making stuff trying as hard as you can to make it good and then putting it out there and anybody who's doing that mad respect yeah because it's so easy to be like be like you suck you're like yeah but so what i tried really you know yeah i did this yeah why does know? why does somebody else feel the need to give the feedback to a person who just worked hard on something a creative outlet that they liked be like yeah i made this I'm proud of it. I worked hard on it. It's the best I can do. And someone's like, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck you, man. <laughs> like, why would you go out of your way to say that to somebody who's at least putting themselves out there? Probably because they aren't Insecurity. dealing with their own shit. Insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably exactly what it is. And I'm super insecure. Like every time I go on stage for sure, but I'm getting more comfortable. Yeah. But still I'm, I'm scared every time, especially if I'm trying new stuff, you know? And yeah, I haven't like tried it on anybody. Or I well, told yeah. Betsy once, and she just like stone faced me. Oh, you know, just like I'm the. Way, I wish I was better at stone face. I'm still gonna try that. <laughs> People will tell me their jokes or their ideas, and I'll be like, Haha, "Yeah, you should do that, no matter what." And I wish, <laughs> I wish I was like, just that. Just didn't work. Just See, don't even say anything to him. Just look at him like, "Oh, I didn't laugh." I'm not like. I'm not laughing now, and that should be an indication to you. I think it's funnier to that shit's tell him that it's funny and then watch him oh, try d- it. Yeah, try that. Tell that joke. I, and see then, I never know if and you're then being you're sarcastic. The, and then when nobody else laughs, you're the only one laughing in the room. Here's Because I want people to succeed, and yeah. I want to encourage people to try their ideas. So even if I don't think it's a great idea, I'm like, yeah, no, you should go try that. Well, because my encouragement is not that... Maybe maybe I don't think it's the best idea or the best premise or the best joke or whatever. But my thing is I just want to encourage like I think if I encourage you, go for it. yeah, and you'll learn on your own because mm-hmm. I could easily just say that's not funny and then you never do it. But it it almost takes out the learning process for you. Whereas if I'm like, I love that you should try it. And you're never gonna know like I'm, yeah, right. if How I, I tell you a joke, I'm not gonna deliver it like I'm gonna deliver it on stage. Right. You know, exactly. Once you get in front of people and you're getting like quiet and like a little chuckle at like a tag or something yeah like that's when the timing is developed that's when like delivery is developed and that can make a joke sometimes like a lot of the shit not to be a dick but josh emerson is like 70 percent delivery yeah you know and energy and just like he's so goddamn lovable yeah i love josh emerson he brings everybody he makes everybody become a part of it Especially because there's there's so many people that are at the places we do open mics that are like, oh, I see there's an open mic over there, but I really don't want to be a part of that. So I'll be over here far away from it. And I'm going to talk to my friends because we're just at a bar and Josh will be like, hey, that's not an option. Hi. Yeah. (laughs) Guess what? You're a part of this shit. And the people are like, okay. And And then sometimes he gets big laughs because he does. He brings crowd. He brings everybody into it. And then he gets a laugh. You're like, oh. That was wise of him to make everybody in the room participate in the comedy. And if you give him a wireless mic, he's oh. going to walk the whole bar. It's beautiful. And talk to everybody. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he's just like has a Fitbit and he's like short a couple steps and he's like, I'll just get my steps in real quick. Oh shit, we got a wireless mic? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got the wireless mic? I bet I could get a half mile during this set. <laughs> takes a couple laps? Yeah. I don't, <laughs> just goes I don't for think a, that's the case. Just goes for a run with a... 
<laughs> with the mic. I I envy his ability to command attention. Not give a shit. Yeah, and not give a shit too. He'll just get in people's face and just be like, "Where are you from, sir?" Yeah, I don't care, and just walk away. Yeah, or, he's, he's gonna do the same. But thing. he engages everybody. Yeah, he's gonna do the same thing whether or not. That's like commanding the attention, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's gonna do the same thing, whether or not you guys respond. So, so he's like commanding <laughs> yeah. attention by not giving a shit, and he's so loud. Yeah, and <laughs> there's great. times where he's just yelling at people, and so, so. not a lot of laughs. Just the comedians are laughing, yeah. and everybody's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" That's great though. If you're making all the comedians laugh, and everybody else is like, Who? "Fuck yeah!" It's a special moment. Yeah, you know, it's those moments where you're stoked you went that night. Yeah. Just see Josh do something crazy, flip a chair. <laughs> Yo, um, can I pee? Please. Damn, definitely. I thought if I peed before we'd be good, but um, absolutely it's not. All right. We it's take always pee good breaks. to take pee break. Pee break. Pee break. <gasps> yeah, I got a piece of glass in my finger still from when I fell through. Actually, it's this one. When I fell through Can a glass window, <laughs> and uh, everybody thinks I was trying to kill myself. Were you? No, I was just drunk. I wasn't drunk, actually. There was a broken but, window. Or, but were you, though? You know what I mean? No, I was pretty happy then. Okay. I was late for work, and my snowboard was <laughs> drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you should, what? I, he was it late for work, drunk. I, I didn't say it was a great time in my life. But yeah, but it was, was a happy time. I was happy. I yeah. was getting Look drunk before work. Obviously, he was happy. He was drinking before work. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how the, I know I'm happy. That's one of the major causes of unhappiness, is having to go to work sober. <laughs> I so, I get that. I worked at Radio Shack. It made made it way better. But yeah, my snowboard was laying in front of my door in my bedroom. Like across from my door in my bedroom, there was a door to the mud room outside. Yeah. And it had a glass window in it, and I tripped over my snowboard and just went straight through it. Tripped or slipped? I picture you stepping on it, and it's like on the carpet, just like, or you just tripped over it. It was like, oh, uh, <laughs> like. Shouldn't have drank before work. <laughs> did you go in that day or did you call in? No, I called in. Like, hey. I was bleeding all over the place and I called my mom because I didn't know. I thought I was like dying. He had like a strip of skin hanging. Uh, and I just I knew it was like, you know, yeah. right there on my wrist. So I just punched like, or got a bunch of gauze and pressure. put a bunch of pressure on it. Yeah. So did you like, try I'm to like, put the flap in or I'm did it just dangle? No, I'm just like just queasy. Dangle. I'm queasy right now thinking about it. <laughs> Like I literally might just pass out. He's okay. But, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, no, it's not that. I'm just picturing someone's arm skin was, hanging off. That's what's making me. There uh, was blood all over the house because see, it's this stuff. At that does time, does blood make you uncomfortable? I mean, what about period blood? <laughs> Sorry, was that your joke? Only makes me. <laughs> 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 it only makes me uncomfortable. Um, yeah, if it's period blood during sex, but if it's just arm blood during sex, it's fine. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Me neither. I lost. I don't know. Yeah. Um. I don't remember. What <laughs> oh yeah, I have a piece of glass in my finger because it from that cut right here. And I told the doctor, I was like, I really feel like there's a piece of glass in there. And he's like, Nah, you're fine. If it was metal, you could have just used the magnetic dart. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm glad it's not the metal. The old, the, the old JJ <laughs> is there a foreign object in my body <laughs> technique. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> it's so funny to picture. Uh <laughs> shit. Oh uh, yeah, it's like oh mom's gonna be pissed. I think it's funny it took that long too. Like the skull had to heal. Like they definitely could have just probably squeezed it out. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It sounds like the whole story, those group I don't know, wouldn't want any of those guys doing uh emergency or impromptu surgery of any kind. <laughs> but, yeah. Fair enough. Just, I was, yeah, well I was just smoking a lot of weed and partying when I was eighteen. Yeah, yeah, and I knew about to guns. Go to college, and I never pointed one at my head. Yeah, BB. That's the thing. I feel like real BB gun. I wonder. I bet. Do Jacob's parents have guns? I, they don't seem like I big doubt gun. It. I doubt it because he pointed one at his head. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, like I was. I mean, definitely around like fourteen, fifteen. I think around. I think like either my fourteenth or fifteenth birthday, my uncle got me a shotgun for Christmas. Right, and. Before then, I'd talk to my dad about guns, but definitely then we like had like a whole like, you know, we were shooting nose. guns when we could walk, like before you could walk, just lying on the ground. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I got a red, red Rider BB gun for like my fourth, yeah. fourth or fifth br- B- or birthday. Yeah, I had airsoft yeah. guns, but my dad was totally cool if I pointed that in my head. He was like, yeah. I had a little twenty-two. Plastic. Yeah, yeah. If it's but 
I still wasn't ever just able to take it out and go shoot by myself. Yeah, no, definitely. We went down to the river and just grab a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go shoot some shit? Yeah. But even then, you like you were raised around guns, so you're like, under no circumstance during this, go shoot some shit. It's like, oh, this party. is unloaded. Am I going to point it at any near, even anyone's body at all? No, that's yeah. a rule. Unloaded, loaded. Don't yeah. point guns at people, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're trying to shoot them. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to want to point them real precisely at that yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. That's a terrifying proposition. Getting to shot. shoot somebody. Shoot somebody? I don't it's know. It's a life-changing experience for feels, sure. It feels pretty distant for me. Yeah. Unless you hide it. Be like, and you're worried about it the whole time. Do you own a gun? Yeah. Shotgun? Is yeah. it your house? Uh, I don't have... All my guns are... At, at your dad's parents. house? Yeah, my parents' house. Right. I don't have any guns with me here. But I feel like there's some distance between between guns and people. You know? It's like, oh, got him. Got him like I thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Fire just like I thought. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I could stab. I Defi- think it, definitely well, couldn't stab. Jacob's whole story was he was like pulling the trigger. Nothing was happening. So he cocked it, then pointed yeah. it at his head. Just like, it's a fundamental, why don't you cock it and then point it at the ground? Apparently cocking it Move. loads another round yeah. into the said. gun. He really just didn't understand how that gun worked. <laughs> or how any gun worked. I bet he shot it. it the first time. It was already cocked for him. He saw a spark. Yeah. But he was like... No, it's exactly what the happened. The fuck? Yeah, I think he admits that's what happened. <laughs> but he he didn't sound like that was like a naive thing. Yeah. It was just like, apparently that's how a BB gets in and then just moved on. <laughs> yeah. Didn't giggle or anything. And I was just like, wait, that's what? That's definitely a naive thing. Maybe. Or maybe we're just privileged that we grew up near guns. Guns. Yeah. White I think privilege. you should teach your redneck privilege to grow Red, up around redneck guns. privilege. I mean that's still white privilege. Mm-hmm. Still, still, I think that's like a part. Yeah, but Jacob's white too. White. Yeah, but he, yeah, he but has he's white Jewish. privilege, but he doesn't have the redneck part of the white privilege. Right, it's different. Yeah, yeah. He's he's more beautiful. I feel like he'd know how to act yeah. in a well dressed room far yeah. better than I. He probably has a, like a inherent understanding of financial. Systems I bet his too. dad didn't get For drunk sure. and crush a camper shell with a four wheeler like a monster truck rally. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. No, My I don't think did. so. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> like Sunday afternoon at a redneck household. He didn't throw hairspray into burn barrels and watch them explode. That's I've definitely done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a fun one. That was before people stopped burning stuff in barrels. But out in Blanco, just like yeah. burn your trash. Then, yeah, the old burn your trash. Little gas. You just see black fires all over the place. <laughs> yeah, and it's just normal. <laughs> it's like, burning oh, day. Those are the neighbors. That's just reeks like burning plastic. Yeah. Yeah, and, and now was... we're like, why is cancer so prevalent? <laughs> <laughs> uh, figure it out. Uh, cancer. That's a fun topic, huh? Hmm. So I wanted to move to, but what are... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to move to it either. What are your guys' uh, astrological signs? Are you guys cancers? Cancer. I'm a Capricorn. Are you actually a cancer? Yeah. I actually don't know what I am. I think I'm a Libra. Hmm. It's either that or Scorpio. I, I just... know I'm the last day of whichever one. I think October 22nd is the last day of Libra. Hmm. So I'm like a Libra, almost Scorpio. A couple hours later, I'd be a Scorpio, you know? You're like one of those people that live on the state line. Yeah. <laughs> kind of be in New Mexico, but kind yeah. of Colorado, too. My house in Arizona, but my property goes to Colorado. So, <laughs> so I could grow some weed. Yeah. Can you? What are the rules on that? Nobody knows. As long as you're in Colorado. It hasn't happened yet. Once it does, I'll I feel, it out. I mean, there's a state line right there. We could try it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cheap property. Yeah. <laughs> there's a river. Yeah. I feel like it'd be a great place to grow weed. Yeah. And it's an, there's a New Mexico gas station right there. Gas stations in New Mexico sell alcohol. I guess they do in Colorado mm-hmm. now, too. They do. I keep forgetting that. And Walmart. It's new. It's a new mm-hmm. law. I still go to liquor stores. I'll go to the grocery store than the liquor store every time. Yeah, that's good. Support. I'm loyal. It's still it's cheaper there. Dude, what's weird, this is what I thought. So there's still a little bit of prohibition on alcohol in terms of there's places you can and can't buy it. Like right. daycare centers, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's so annoying that they don't have beer on tap at high schools. What do they have um, beer at Petco? <laughs> right, but it's weird because the companies that would have been lobbying for limited sales of alcohol would have been liquor stores. Hmm. They so, were. Right? Cause, right? But it's just weird because you're someone who... Sells alcohol. Is in, yeah. You're, you're in the market of selling alcohol, but you're lobbying for the prohibition of alcohol right but it's just once it's just, walmart it's, starts selling alcohol yeah, the durango to, liquor next door yeah you're gonna go to business yeah it would be a terrible time and though. there's so many liquor stores in this town. yeah you know how many people that employs i don't like, know I just there's like rich people because they started a little neighborhood liquor store yeah 
and now they're loaded. Yeah, and then and now the liquor store is going to be gone. Mm-hmm. But it's weird to me to be a person who owns a place that sells liquor, but being like, we got a limit where people can get what I sell. But I guess it also makes sense. That's how everything happens. It's business. Yeah. Yeah. People that work in jails are lobbying against marijuana, you know? Right. Because that'll but they put aren't them selling out of a job. It. They aren't selling it. The, the weird part for the liquor but store is like, it's almost contradictory because you're selling it. Yeah, it's but way more... But I get more... being the only one... I get being like you want to be the only place you can sell it and times change and but yeah I I don't know it's a weird one like all the marijuana stores are going to start lobbying whenever Walmart and Walgreens and shit are trying to get weed sell their marijuana cigarettes and like no you can only buy weed at Durango Organics yeah but right now Durango Organics is like right currently the state that their business is in they're lobbying for the legalization of weed less regulation now Right, because for them, if New Mexico, it'd be good for them if they could open Branch up a store out to New Mexico. In New Mexico. Yeah. Right, exactly. So they're currently lobbying for less regulation on weed. But then at some point, when it gets so deregulated, you see, that's the weird part for me. Mm-hmm. It's like all of a sudden they have to shift their agenda to be like, you know what? I think we should be like, like marijuana should be legal, and then like fine, marijuana is legal, like except for. We should be the only ones that are allowed to sell it. <laughs> I bet the same shit happened with alcohol if you take back the timeline. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's weird. It started over here and they were like, I bet there's companies right on the border of Utah that are like, God damn it, if that law just turns, we're going to open a store right over there. Yeah. You know? And then so on goes Strange. the cycle. You just, have to, you just have to change your personality so much if you're a guy that owns a weed store, right? When that happens, when you're so pro-weed and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, regulate weed. Well, you know, I mean... People that own weed stores are former drug dealers, generally. Like, right. So they had the money and the knowledge, right? And most involved. likely the connection. I think it's gonna be a long time before weeds sold in Walmart. Yeah. Be nice though. Get yeah. Some One stop shop. Cost. Who needs local business? Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. Just Monsanto everything. Yeah, we'll live in <laughs> this beautiful world where you can get anything you want, but the only place you can get it is Walmart. You Plus just, Monsanto. Yeah. You just get like weed, prostitutes. There'll still be bagels. <laughs> a market for boutique organic grown weed, just like you think? nature's oasis and natural grocers and yeah, still can compete people who can afford it. Yeah. Are still gonna go higher prices but higher quality in yeah. there. Interesting. But I feel like you make your money off the dirtbag stoner that like has this much money to spend. That's know? a loyal customer for, for sure. sure. Yeah, the the everyday smoker. Mm. And I I'm a dirtbag myself, so I have to grow a couple points for myself cuz yeah. I can't afford to smoke like I smoke and buy every You wouldn't be able to buy weed as much as you smoke weed. For, no. You couldn't afford it. Would it would be very inconvenient for my budget. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart would have to grow weed in china and import it yeah before it would become that cheap cheap enough to right. sell it cheaper than any of the dispensaries around town that is a good thing that weed is so goddamn cheap it really is it's like half what we used to have to pay on the black market for weed mm-hmm. not, like an ounce yeah. of weed yeah well it's less than well he can get an ounce of weed for like 135 yeah that's less than half he used to be Wasn't 350 your, were you black market in new mexico though mm, yeah yeah Doesn't but i wouldn't uh, say we were not yeah we were definitely black market there was nothing legal about what we were doing allegedly well there was no legal weed mm-hmm. so allegedly. if you're gonna smoke <laughs> weed but even up here i mean that was a thing you know prices were pretty much the same up here before the medical thing came around and then the black gotcha. market dropped a little bit because the medical was actually relatively reasonably priced 50 60 bucks which everything else was anyway so the black market to keep up is just like how about 40 yeah. and then it just progressed and now it's like how about 20 for what used to be 50 you know yeah less than half yeah is it weird if i just keep like looking at my naked ass everybody no. else does yeah Callie did for sure, it yeah. actually bothered her considerably. Really? Yeah. You could just, you could just set it. T- you could take it off the wall, though. The right? Time she's ah. You want to be on this podcast? You're gonna have to look at Elliot's ass. That's my motto. Thank Brian, you. Brian takes it home with him. <laughs> yeah, he brings Every, it back just yeah. for the podcast. Yeah. Exactly. I put it's it in like, the box with the GoPro when I come over. <laughs> <laughs> Straightens it. He's like, yeah. Let me just. Where's the? Hey, the hook. <laughs> it's actually not on my face. It's definitely it right peck. on. It's yeah. just right yeah. on my ass. Right on the donkey. There we go. When yeah. I'm podcasting, there's just a dust mark about that size on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> Above your bed. 
I'm glad I did that, man. You Me should, too. That's, that's when are you going to make your calendar? We idea. will definitely hang it up in here. Yeah, I will. I got to get more people to offer to photograph me naked. I was thinking about doing a coffee shop shoot. Would be it seems like an, a very logical progression from this. What coffee shop do you think is going to be pumped about that's you? That's the thing. Pouring beans on yourself. <laughs> it's going to be a Zach and Mary situation. <laughs> I had to have such a unique connection to get that. Where is that? Um... It's allegedly Joel's bar. Is that okay? Did I cover this story? That makes with? so much sense. <laughs> I just know a guy who bartends there, and you guys know how it's like a really shitty bar. Yeah, I don't go there. <laughs> only the no yeah, offense, I only go Joel's. There when I'm Joel, real fucked yeah, up. Well, you get the idea. girls are like, "Let's go to Joel's." There's no Fuck. rules at Joel's. I don't There's play really, that game. I go home. Yeah. Um. So I was just like, "Hey, what if I came in?" They open at like four or whatever PM. And I was like, what if I came in at like 10 AM and just like did a photo shoot naked? And they're like, we don't see how that would be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did. You didn't sock up or anything? No, just full. No, there's a bunch. I have a bunch of full frontal ones. Hmm. <laughs> and also the, I made all my guy friends just, just in case you needed those. Yeah. Well, there's some of them. There's a nice one where I have like a, one of those drink mixer cups over my crotch and then, oh. but then I'm holding like a bottle of vodka way up there and it's pouring all the way down can that be July my birthday's in July <laughs> I think it'll either be that or that picture I don't know if I should use two photos from the same shoot but yeah um, and I also made a bunch of my guy friends come to the come to the shoot so in that same picture there's like five guys at the bar all cracking up laughing <laughs> and like they're having the time of their life and there's a bunch there's numerous pictures where there's just like guys like pointing or whatever <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see these. Yeah, and I didn't sock. I didn't sock for him. That was, it was like we're pretty good friends. So, come here's look. my dick. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's art. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. It's just like being a nude you model for a class. Get away with a lot when it's art. When you call it art. Do yeah. I know all any of these friends? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have they been on the podcast? No, I don't think so. Oh damn it. Because I want to ask about the experience from another side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't have as much fun as I did, for sure. Nice. It was You're cold in there. I'll always tell, a performer. I'll say that. It was cold in there. and um, so I He's just poured it into like a colored shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a bit a double shot glass. <laughs> okay. Um, and I stepped in something wet. I don't know if you've ever stepped in something wet, but it makes your balls shrink. Hmm. It definitely sets off that survival instinct. Just yeah, like, it's just cold and wet. All I'm going like, to think about next time I step in something wet. Wait. Oh, it did. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. He's right. Hey, guys. <laughs> Lefty sucks up. Call up the investigation. He sucks right. up inside me sometimes. I don't yeah. know if that's good or bad. Hmm. Or you got to really wake not. up and just like push it. Like, God, sometimes, get out of here. Sometimes. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing near my neck? Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I would like to do a uh, Abbey Road style picture. Okay. That'd be fun because it's like the four of them on the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. There's nice crosswalks in Durango, I think, with the, the buildings <laughs> on either side. I like to do three clothed dudes dressed kind of dress kind of like the right um, the Beatles in that picture, but then just me like <laughs> just in the middle, just naked. <laughs> I feel like you could just Photoshop you in the front or the back of the Abbey Road picture. Yeah. As a quick like coming out promotion. You could. Um, just for Instagram. Does anybody want to? Do you want to do that? I don't know how to do that. You should ask Jonas. He seems like he's capable. Yeah. I'm trying to teach myself Photoshop. You just can. YouTube and shit. Yeah. I can I can Photoshop. Why not? I'm definitely going to do that. Like if you got, you just got to put a lot of time into it yeah. to I'll, make it look really nice. Yeah. I also like the uh, all doing all original pictures. I have a couple more that I'm ready to use. I have a good one for the winner. A nice winner picture. Those ones are always funnier for me. The, the, the comedy comes from your naked... In a situation where you're not supposed to be naked, like in right? Snow. Naked in a scarf. Yeah, exactly. So winter, yeah. Mm hmm. There's a scarf, bro. Really? A elf hat? No elf hat. Mm -hmm. just a, it's a, a tiny scarf on your dick. No, it comes all the way down from my neck. Oh, around the neck, copy. down the dick. Yep. And then I just, <laughs> I have my uh, Fort Lewis alumni mug because it was right when I graduated. Those are my props for that one. That's <laughs> good. That's good. That'll probably be December or January. Makes sense. Yeah, I have a couple naked in nature, which is kind of fun too. But the hammock one is beautiful. You like the hammock one? Yeah, it's just not as socially unacceptable to be naked in the in the woods, you know, because it's not um, illegal. I think. Well, and all the other illegal. ones, it sounds like you're actually covering your dick with something, and this one you're just tucked with your legs crossed, right? 
And that is the only cover? No, you can't see it. My chest sticks out oh, okay. in front of my in front of my day. Copy. I have uh, some from behind in this. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure which one I want to use for that. Brian just saw what he wanted to see. <laughs> He's like, that's a tuck. That's a tuck. I know a tuck when I see it. <laughs> I thought we talked about it. I thought you said you tucked it. I don't know. There were ones in that same I was relatively high where I tucked at this it. There, point. There, um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the competition. Might as well get a little high. And then yeah. Kate's like, first... Brian Nystrom. Just like, shit. Nice. <laughs> How was that? Was that a good experience for you, you think? Yeah, I wish I wish I knew that... Because I talked to Jonas and uh, Josh Emerson, and they both said they weren't going to reuse their material. Uh, and they did not. But everybody the, else did <laughs> from yeah. the first round. And I just have so little, like, strong material. That uh, I was... Uh, that was my advice to Jacob and Josh, was to not reuse their material. Or to reuse their material. Oh, really? Because they both said they weren't going to. Yeah. I'm pretty sure on this podcast. I told them both remember. that they should reuse their material. See, I should have talked to you because I talked. Well, you weren't in the competition. That's why I didn't ask you, I guess. Yeah. I, I should have talked to more people. Yeah. Well, that's I did the same thing you did. I went out at the same place and it was because I did my strongest five the first round. And I was like, hell yeah. And then the next one I was like, all right. I know this is slightly weaker material, but I still think it's really strong. Yeah. But whatever, I'll go with it. I think if I had done my strongest five combined with a weaker five, I would have gone through instead of doing a medium ten. Yeah. Um, and also the crowd doesn't like... Because it seems like we do all of our jokes a lot to us because we see each other every week doing the same jokes. Mm -hmm. But can, for uh, people in the crowd that come to... Com like, the Henry like, Strader? Yeah, they're just yeah. like, oh, a comedy show. They they have no idea what your act is, really. And nobody... It's like almost narcissistic how much we think about people know our material. Nobody pays that much attention to you. Right. Just so you... <laughs> Even when comics retell me my shit, they're always off. Like, they yeah. always fuck up the punchline. They always fuck up, like, a detail dude, and make dude, dude, it dude, 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 more you know, extreme. Do you or... know how you go oh, with the joke and then... Yeah, like, trying to explain it like that. Right. Dude, dude, and dude. you're like, I don't say that. I don't say that yeah. at all. This <laughs> is what I say. They're yeah. like... Yeah, but still. But like, use my line that I'm trying to give you right. so I get some sort of weird recognition through your success. <laughs> well, it is fun. Sick. Like me and Betsy and Drew have been writing together. Yes. Yeah, and you whenever uh, whenever we help each other with a joke, like when I hear one of them tell a joke that we were like working on mm -hmm. and it's perfect, just like there's a little bit that I'm just like, fuck yeah, good job. Nice, yeah. You, know? you feel accomplished. Well, you more, you more for them. Yeah, but you yeah. should. You, I mean, you, yeah. But it's partially your you deserve credit for it. Like, I'm just like it's their joke, but it's nice to you don't get contribute. credit for it. But it's yeah. yeah, it's good to see your own recognizing your own contribution to somebody else's. Well, and the thing about it is it lets you know that there's actually that thing where people can be helpful. And, you know, like all of us get something out of those little writing sessions every time. Yeah. Like at least one joke or two jokes. And it's fun. Good. Is all. It's good to see that there's the give and take and. Yeah. Yeah. Because once is, you talk about something, then you readdress it. Like, you're ever going through your notebook and you're like, well, I never told this and then say it, but you haven't yeah. looked at it in three weeks or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, you definitely have a different perspective about it. It's a good way to do it. I don't know. Never, yeah. Always always keep all the stuff you've ever written. I, I was going through all of that stuff, like, pretty recently before I did the album that you guys should listen to. Yeah. So, yeah, you recorded an album. Yeah. Which you toured for beforehand right yeah got around a little bit so uh, what how did you end up in minneapolis Mi say that didn't say you go that. to minneapolis 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 you added a syllable i think minneapolis <laughs> <laughs> you went like indianapolis like mini mouse you combined yeah. minneapolis <laughs> no you combined indianapolis with minneapolis, minneapolis. <laughs> to get minneapolis, minneapolis which is fine i don't think i've ever really since like elementary school, I haven't heard or said Minneapolis. Yeah, fuck or until red. you left <laughs> or read. I read yeah. you, fuck. Yeah, dude. Since like elementary school, I haven't uh, read. Uh. <laughs> there was a long period where I did not read. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my girlfriend lives there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to visit her, awesome. and I made it about me as I, as I do. Um, so when I went to visit her, I uh hit up a bunch of mics um yeah show producers just uh. i knew people who from colorado had been to minneapolis so i asked them if they had connections they'd be willing to share 
And then, you know, just be polite, send an email, send a Facebook message, include your video. Um, get you a long way. Yeah. But I ended up getting three shows there. Uh, it was a great time. That was the most talented city I've seen. Anywhere, yeah. anywhere I've ever been for comedy, there was more comedians in Minneapolis I was blown away by than any of the Phoenix, Denver, Albuquerque. Like, they're all, they all, all those cities have really good comedians. But the percentage of the Minneapolis, now I'm saying it, Minneapolis Sorry. comedians that I saw, the percentage of them that I was blown away by was insane. Maybe maybe I was just on really good shows or they were all having good nights or something. But man, I was like, one of them, one of the shows, it was like 10 or 15 people. I was like, these are all killers. These, seems like everybody here is the be- all the best people, mm-hmm. which I may, and maybe it was, it was dumb luck. But then the other shows had five or six and it was the same i was like eh, man, everybody here is so good right so good at writing jokes and so funny i was very impressed with that city good crowds too midwest they need something to do they're bored yeah the only fair. time i've ever been to minneapolis <laughs> <laughs> let's just call it that that'll be <laughs> just layovers going to indianapolis but i've never actually been to minneapolis it's a nice airport i got stuck there that's when we had our uh was it, what they call it a bomb cyclone in denver <laughs> What? Sounds like a shark data. Dude, what? yeah. Bom- they, call was, it, they call it a bomb cyclone. Which I was is, leaving um, to go to Houston at that same time. Yeah. And got... Stuck in Denver? Nope. I Luckily, the plane that was going to Denver got canceled. So I was stuck here for gotcha. two days before gotcha. they could get me another one out. Yeah. So I was stuck in Minneapolis for like 12. Well, so I was supposed to fly out the night at like 7 p.m. And they said, that flight's canceled. We got you on the 7 a.m. flight from Minneapolis to Denver. And I was like, word. Got there for the 7 a.m. flight. Delay, 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 delay. Got delayed like 12 times. I was there for over 12 hours. I got back to Denver at like 7.30 p.m. or something. Like it was crazy. It's 24 hours yeah. from when you were Well, to the leave. first one they at least canceled. So I didn't get to the airport at 7 p.m. that night. I slept through the night. Got there at 7 a.m. Oh. And then only waited for... 12 so hours. It was, yeah, it was nice to have advanced notice on the first 12-hour delay. That's cool. And then after that, they're like, delay, 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 delay. And I think they were doing it so I would spend more money on beer because your boy got hammered. That was yeah. the most expensive day of the trip. So For fucking sure. expensive. By far. There's like... In the airport. And they kept moving the gate around too, so you'd close out with one bartender and then like go to a different gate and be like, oh, here's the bar at this gate, and then start a new tab and have beers. It was nuts. Yeah. I just went to Tennessee with my family and me and my dad every time we got to an airport we got to the gate the whole family was like all right you got the kids cool and then just went straight to the bar i just drank. stuck the kids with you no it stuck the kids with the women in the family that don't drink beer gotcha the mormons yeah it was pretty much me and my dad and sometimes my brother-in-law drinking beer cool so you guys we can do a drink dude traveling is also way more fun when you can drink also fishing i didn't realize that fishing was just drinking it's all drinking yeah, yeah. No, if you yeah. catch a fish you're like what but yeah or you i mean you just like drink the whole time ice fishing i didn't realize i was like ice fishing sucks it's cold i've never been ice fishing i hear it is fun it's just a way to get away from your wife yeah it's a way to just be like all right how about we go uh i don't know drink whiskey out there (laughs) me and you me and you leave the wives here we go sit in a fucking hut drink whiskey i didn't realize that until pretty recently if i'd known at you boys been sure fishing a lot yeah what are you doing out there in that river dude not riding motorcycles. Camping. <laughs> you don't even take fishing poles. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot of bobbers and poppers and whatever <laughs> other fishing equipment exists. <laughs> I think poppers is a drug for gay people. Uh, yeah. I'm sp- I, I think figure you know that. Pride. I've, heard, happy, I've heard it's... Hashtag pride. Hashtag happy pride. I yeah. heard it's uh, fun to do right when you orgasm. Poppers? Do a popper. What is a popper? I think it's, it's an a... amyl nitrate. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's like smelling salts? I think so. I right? think, is it? Do weightlifters use it? Sure. What are the things? Have you seen like someone's about to like do like a deadlift PR and they like break that shit in front of the blah, and they no. go they go kind of Hulk mode for a little bit? Well, I've been knocked out and had smelling salt broken in front of my nose and woken up to that very fucking yeah, aggressive it's smell. It's pretty yeah. sure it's amyl, amyl nitrate, amyl, yeah. something like that. Anal, anal nitrate. Anal nitrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, anal yeah. nitrate. That's why it's good for the orgasms. <laughs> um, dude, Denver <laughs> does their pride celebration it's like june's supposed to be pride month but yeah it's all like the, one weekend yeah all the c- cities in the west kind of coordinate so they have their pride on different like denver is different than salt lake which is right. different than grand junction and durango they all kind of communicate and plan their pride celebrations so that you can 
Hit them all. They're all different. Yeah, I guess you could go on your Pride tour, which book me for that, by the way. I that would be fantastic. <laughs> That'd be a great way to tour. Yeah, book me for your Pride uh, weekend. <laughs> Basically, I did Grand Junction. I'm doing Durango. He's got to add Denver and Salt Lake would be the... I think those are the ones that all talk to each other. But I love Denver always does it Father's Day weekend, which is tomorrow's Father's Day. I just, right. That's so funny to me that they just have their gay pride parade on father's day <laughs> as if they weren't disappointed enough already you have to i can't make uh sorry dad i can't make it to dinner yeah it's that last fuck you yeah, to dad yeah I you can come out to the parade yeah and then there's all these straight dads like what the fuck did i ever i feel like that's kind of what my dad feels there's about probably my a, <laughs> like, I can't probably a lot of so, yeah, straight though. dads that are like trying to be supportive though that might might go out yeah especially in denver like, all like, right i'm gonna try to less hate yeah and there's a bunch of gay, young gay dudes trying to find daddies. It's a good time. I respect that. It's a good time. <laughs> if I could... See, I, I guess I haven't gone on the sugar mama hunt, but it's definitely crossed my mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. What age is a cutoff? Do you have an age that's a cutoff? Uh, I like prefer s- them about to die. Yeah. So I don't have to do it very long. <laughs> it's just quick, let me quick just, marriage. Let me just get in that will. Just one, maybe one or two times. Right. See, I was thinking more like fifty and fit. Is your cutoff? I no, that's this is ideal. Okay. Like forty five to fifty five in shape just needs Loaded. somebody to bang. Dude, you should have waited on these girls I waited on. This these women. They were, they no, were women. I definitely would have taken a shot. I, yeah. I feel like I liked the innocence of it. It was fun to just be like whatever, flirting with old people, it's fine. Right. But they were definitely right. And they were like, 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 a, like I lap? set the, yeah, like I like set the check on the table and they like, you know what I mean? Just mm. reach and touch your hand. Thank you. And you're like, That's okay. cute. Yeah. You're like, you're breaking touch barriers. You're, I'm learning how they body didn't leave language a number? works. Nobody left a number. They paid all cash though. Mm. So there's nothing to, you know what I mean? There's well, nothing. You still take them a bill generally. Yeah. I guess they could. Yeah. They could have, um, on their receipt. That's where I'd do it. They could have, they could have written their number. So I wrote my number. Well, they might've not had a pen. Maybe. Somebody might have called you. Are you yeah. trying to bang Mills? No. So, <laughs> from my experience, <laughs> so, sex is pretty powerful. You know, very liberated woman. Yeah, I don't know. They might have had husbands. A I didn't check. More experience. I didn't, actually, yeah, I didn't even notice they had wedding rooms. See, then you weren't that interested, right? Like, because it's all kind of like I just realized. I was like, oh, they're they're into me. They're flirting with me, right. and then I'm just charismatic, beautiful. If there's an old lady that laughs at me too much, I look at her finger. Just yeah. <laughs> just to check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's an old lady that laughs She's at me right. too much. I smell her finger. <laughs> I just don't to get check, that close. just to check. You're like, oh yeah, she's had that in someone's butt. That's why I never got many tips. <laughs> <laughs> smell too many just people's go, fingers. Just go around smelling people's fingers. <laughs> It'll hold you back. <laughs> so what can I get you guys today? Smelling people's anything <laughs> is really gonna be a red flag, dude. I actually set a dish down one time. I was like, smells good. <laughs> the, they just looked at me like, why the fuck would you say that? And I, was, I kind of agree with them. I would understand if it was fajitas. It was like, no, nah, yeah. it was like a burger. I like sat down. I was like, anything else I can get you? And they're like, no. I was like, oh, it smells really good. And they were like, this definitely been, doesn't smell like loogie. Yeah. They're like you've been smelling our food, bro. <laughs> like I was back in the kitchen. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take that out. For take it all the buds off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're doing a line of burger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I did cocaine off your burgers. What? <laughs> I might fist bump you and just go for it, you know. Oh, it smells good. You'd be like, yeah. Well, no. If you if you're like, yeah, I just did cocaine off your burger. Oh, if I told them that, you'd be like, hell yeah, brother. It's definitely know your crowd situation. Yeah, that's the start of a zombie movie. That's how you get maggots <laughs> in your butt. Let's have the gay STD zombie disease. I don't know. I don't. Has to be gay. I didn't mean to say gay. I did genuinely just wanted to make it about me again. I wouldn't have thrown that. In. Um, <laughs> but I guess. You know, if you got a shtick, yeah, go for it. You got what you got. I think the uh, the STD uh, zombie thing <laughs> is that, AIDS. I think it's AIDS. It, that, it already yeah, happened. It, would, it already happened. We missed it. Well, it they was, just died. Definitely, though. they didn't try to eat people. Viruses out there that yeah. could do that turn people into like rabies. It yeah, it's like a mutation of rabies that spread through. That makes you a zombie. Sex. 
And that'd be hard to control because people like to have sex. It's got to be, yeah. And like, it would, we can't keep people from doing people pain are pills. Really, people are really bad at not having sex when you're like, hey, don't. It's like, I feel like it have to might take like a zombie. Like, a month. like I know, but yeah, but but uh, it's you know, she sex. touched my hand, but yeah. I put the receipt down. So it's yeah, I've definitely she, not worn a condom just because a chick was just like, don't wear a condom. Just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She seems like... <laughs> Remember the first time, you know? It's like a third time situation. Fifth, maybe? Fifth time banging? Oh, got you. I thought you were going to say, remember the first time you wore a condom. And I was like, I'll let you know when it happens, bro. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't use them. No, I uh, I think you should probably use condoms, man, to be safe. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been silly in the first past. First time? Yeah, yeah, I always keep one of them just... In my butthole. I have one in... <laughs> <laughs> Every open. morning. Just open. Yeah. Like yeah. A, yeah. 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 Just like, not today, motherfucker. <laughs> I respect it. Got if that if it's so frequent that you need to be that prepared, I feel like you should be that yeah. prepared. Yeah. It's actually... <laughs> 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 like how often are you I might just, just get, get like fucked in the fucked ass, the yeah, ass at the gas station it's today. just an easier way for other people to put condoms on instead of like if I just keep it in my butthole <laughs> <laughs> oh. I feel like you'd have to tape it on the outside or something those days you get real fucked up and didn't know if you put one in or not and you can't find it did I put a like, con- but did I put it in there today did I put a condom in my butthole this morning or not I forget <laughs> I brush my teeth. Well, I and that's shave. when you just need. That's when go fishing again. That's just when you need a trusted friend. Hey, dude, no homo. <laughs> Will you see if there's a condom in my butthole? <laughs> that's a friend right there. But you gotta say no homo, or else it's gay. Yeah, this is totally not gay. But I really need you to look into my ass. This I, is purely practical sense. I feel like if you're putting condoms you in your butt a preemptively, there's like a couple dudes where you don't have to be like no homo. You just be like, "Yo, uh, I might have lost a condom in my ass. Do you think yeah. you could help me out?" No, but it's good. It's still good to like so they know. You're like, "Hey, just so you know, even if they are gay, you're like, this isn't a time where we're being gay. This is a time where you're just relaying information." I need you to, to put me. your fingers in my ass and yeah. feel around for a condom. Do you <laughs> yeah. think you could do that? For I need me? a yeah. second opinion. But just so you know, this time when your fingers are in my ass, it's not in a gay way. <laughs> it's a yeah. medical emergency. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I always might like, not be in there. Did you guys say no homo? Was Not it, really, man. That wasn't a I thing mean, for you guys? For, that was a huge part of my high school career. I don't think it was high school for us. Definitely a lot of saying, like, gay. And I wonder where... Do you faggot, know where it started? Fag, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, definitely. definitely, that. like... But you never say no homo. I wonder where no homo started. I think it's a joke. No homo's a joke, right? I don't know. I think in general it's a joke. No, yeah, I don't think it... I think most people that say it say it, like, as a joke, not yeah. just like, hey, I'm not a queer, but... Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people. But when people say, say like that, that <laughs> yeah, they're definitely gay. They have yeah. Family members. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure, those people are gay. But it's, I remember it's funny, like family members that get super offended and like grossed out when you talk anything remotely gay. And I think Uncle those family members, <laughs> dude. I think those family members are, like Joe Rogan said, secretly afraid that dicks are delicious. Dude. Yeah. Probably. That if you're homophobic, you're gay, man. That's. Being, if, you know how to we, the point where you're like, you know how picketing. you used to call things gay, like that's gay. You know what's gay? Homophobia, bro. Homophobia is so gay. That's <laughs> so Super gay. gay. Hey, dude, just if you, for any reason, if you've ever felt the urge to announce to anyone that you're not gay, uh, you're gay, man. You're for <laughs> sure gay. Nobody was like, I bet he's gay until you were like, I'm not gay. <laughs> Everyone's right. like, Oh, so he's gay. I've it's been like, asked if I was gay before. Yeah. Like I went by, through by gay person or by. Uh, uh, definitely by gay dudes like gay dudes have been extremely aggressive hitting on me before and yeah it always started with one cool guy i was like smoking weed with because i can smoke weed with anybody outside the anima city theater you know uh-huh. and i can make friends i don't give a shit if you're gay yeah but then like four other gay dudes came up oh that were like his friends meeting him there and i was just out yeah. there being a pod like hey man you want to hit this he's like I like drugs. You yeah. Know? So we became friends and then just got surrounded by like more aggressive gay dudes that oh. weren't just trying to smoke weed. Dude, were they just cat calling the shit out of you? I be- Definitely yeah. commenting. We yeah. were close though. Yeah, it maybe, wasn't like. Not, <laughs> yeah, not. Like, hey, yeah. baby, I like your ass. <laughs> no, not that no. kind of cat calling, but just like. Just like. like No, like pretty aggressively. Like, what, like, 
what's up? Like clearly insinuating. Like you're that. talking to our gay friend. Or you gay? You know, oh, okay. in so many words. I picture them saying things like, and then just like, it's a goddamn shame you're not gay. Just like, yeah, exactly. You put your if you were in gay. your butt this morning, yeah. Right. <laughs> that was like the first thing. Yeah, that's how first I knew question. they were aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Or like, do you want to hit of this? And they're like, I want to hit that. And you're like, what? And they're like, hmm. And you're like, I don't think you. I should. didn't say what. I was just like, ah. Oh me. Mm. Got it. Yeah. But yeah. if I'm gonna be complimented by a man, I'd prefer it be a gay man than a straight man. My yeah. dad has gotten flowers from men in bars a few times. Nice. In yeah. Farmington, remember people would walk around and sell flowers yeah. uh, in and restaurants. He, and he didn't even have to suck their dicks, bro. He just had to give them. I don't think grabs. so. <laughs> He's a bit it's of a wild card. Possible. Sexually adventurous, I would say. Yeah. He rub, rubbed his dick on a sheep once, your apparently. Dad? Not, as long as it's not in a sheep, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, he couldn't get it hard, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's, he told that he, story on this podcast. He grabbed the ugliest one. <laughs> The ugliest cheap. Should I stop? I, for some reason, I want to touch this, but it definitely feedback. This whole it. setup just is hands uh, free, bro. <laughs> I know, but I still want to touch it. You always fuck with the mic. Uh, Jacob too. He's like, like cupping and yeah. Do you notice when comedians cup the mic because they're like nervous, so they're choking. hello, not like that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that a lot. It makes it, you sound more of like a radio DJ. Well, yeah, right, right now or in comedy. Well, comedy, it's Either. annoying because it. It fucks up, you know, the whole dynamic the of the, the sound. Audio. Yeah. Yes. And generally not the best setup, you know. Yeah. It's as far as like. S- such a piss poor setup. <laughs> for comedy. Yeah. yeah. They're, like, they're just talking. Yeah. Who cares if it's like. <laughs> Dude, honestly, it's basically. My, yeah. So often if you just stand in the wrong place, it's just, just like feeds yeah, back feedback. hard. Yeah, you if you know. just stand right between them, it's just like this wall you yeah. can't cross. Just, just, yeah. For some reason, the place with the most feedback is center stage You're like the, can we <laughs> how's this where it is can you turn that speaker just a little like yeah that so be I possible to, i have to go stand in the bottom right corner of the stage out of the spotlight and then and then i'll sound good okay oh, there's been behind t- the curtain yeah, yeah there's been times where i just like take a big step back or to yeah. the side just like where yeah. does not and you have a good audio understanding a lot of people don't realize what they like they aren't listening to themselves when they're doing comedy they're looking at the crowd and listening to them but they aren't Hearing their own voice. Right. So they don't realize that they're doing things, like, yeah. doing whatever. And always, like, holding the bottom, like, uh, and was, it just echoes so hard. Because yeah. it doesn't have a pop filter. It doesn't have anything between that. It just yeah. creates this fucking... Yeah. I always hold the mic at the... I like to grab the cord and the mic. Mm. I like to hold it right, like, at the very bottom there. Try to grab it, like... Like, right... Metal. Like, pinky at the base. Pinky at the base. You know? That's like, I'm good. jerking off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was waiting for something. I like to my, I like to <laughs> You're holding it way too aggressive. To finger not my make way a dick up. joke. <laughs> I like I'm blowing a guy. You know, the, pinky at the right. base. One of the uh, proper. One of the first times I got feedback for comedy, I was doing an open mic at the a festival, the Big Pine Festival. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh yeah, one of the things that this festival has to offer is you can do a comedy set for a bunch of people who book clubs in Phoenix, and they'll give you feedback. And I was like a little over a year in, did my set for the feedback and uh, one woman's feedback. She was like, hold the mic less like a dick, more like an ice cream cone. Like, <laughs> Were you talking about dicks? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, See, that's reasonable. Yeah. But I was like, all right. It's, so I guess and I was like, but that doesn't really mean anything. I was like, how do I hold ice cream cones? So I guess by the bot. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been like, does I hold the mic now? <laughs> because I won random. Well, you're not cu- cupping the mic then. And that's a huge thing yeah. that almost every first timer's time especially if they get some laughs then they just get more aggressive about it get up and on they, it. but they're so confident and it's so shitty coming out of the speakers you're like fuck yeah. or they're t- they're holding it like nipple height and just like right yeah and just so into it but don't realize that none of us can hear <laughs> yeah when a, a weird like a lot of times you'll see comedy specials they'll hold it there but that, that guy's probably yeah. got a lapel mic on too especially like anthony just Jessel Nick's last special. Was it was holding, like he was holding it way the down. bottom of it was like belly button height, like yeah. a lot. Yeah, but his audio wasn't even coming from the mic. It was basically a prop mic, right? You know what I mean? It was. It was you off. could tell. Yeah, it was on. It was on, but it, like the audio that was getting recorded for his special was going through a lapel mic for sure. Yeah, it had probably to have multiple yeah. mics around fit, the whole 
stage stage yeah. and if it was that hot like they'd have to turn it up so much that there'd just be like laughter in it and yeah you know what i'm saying i don't yeah. know i think about audio stuff yeah because i was a really band. expensive dynamic mic should cut out a lot of that background like you right. should be able to talk right into it yeah and not get a lot of background i don't like stuff. the ones where they it looks weird to me when they hold it way down me too the whole time it fucked with me i was just yeah. like that mic is bullshit yeah. i don't like this at all I thought <laughs> at least it. tell us the truth motherfucker yeah. don't hold the mic at your belly button i thought about it for a second i got over it fast see i thought did. about You're it like four or five times. <laughs> a little bit yeah because it was so goddamn funny i gotta pick something out about it it's like jacob jonas not the funny part but he's handsome he's a good looking cat yeah, so he's gotta... pretty funny obviously beat me in the competition <laughs> So, yeah, it's better to lose to a funny guy than a not funny guy. I will say that. that was good. I would rather lose to an ugly guy than a beautiful guy, though. You know? Yeah. Like, well. Like, I don't hate Troy as much. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. He so looks like a it, gold biter. When you put it that way. yeah, he looks With, like a, with pro- more teeth, but barely. Like a prospector. Yeah. Hmm. Like a cartoon prospector. It Wonder, is yeah. mid-40s. He's lived a hard life, you know? Yeah. That's what Troy looks stories. like. But he hasn't, so it's like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I know he lives I know, in an RV. Yeah, I know nothing about his life. He could have actually lived a really hard life. I just... This, made, he looks like he has. Made that. He does look like he has. That is decent at comedy. That's usually a telltale sign. That you've lived a hard life? That hasn't been great. Yeah, my shit's been pretty easy, though. Well, agreed. That's why... And Jonas's. That's why I give him so much... <laughs> We're trying to make it hard for you motherfuckers. But Jonas is handy if you can't get a beer. Like, bartenders gravitate towards Jonas, male or female, I've noticed. Because <laughs> he looks like his sister. Just like, Jonas, I will buy you a beer if you get us a beer. And he's just like, okay. He's like, he doesn't even understand the concept. He's like, what do you mean you have to wait for beers? I just walk into a bar. Every time, he just turns around and he's like, yeah, I'll take two of these. And boom. Two I've been beers. standing at the bar for 15 minutes. I see him walk up. I'm like, here, get us a beer. You, you probably tip way better too. Pretty people never tip well. It's true. Too privileged. They don't understand. The Jonas's thing. sister tipped well. I saw her give a fat tip on. Oh yeah, she's rich though. She bought me a drink too, which was nice. And Phil, uh, yeah. I threw up. Phil threw pretty, up pretty quick after that. Right on. When was this? Uh, she was here at the graduation weekend during mm-hmm. the ro- their roast. Nice. Yeah, we went to the roast. Then we went to the straighter. Then we went back to the embassy. Yeah, I, I ran into you guys back at the embassy. I think. Right. Brian denied a shot from another girl. Oh, and she was right next to me. She and then pissed. took a shot from I haven't his s- sister. Oh, I, <laughs> and then she was like, "You're gonna fucking take a shot with her, and not me." And I was like, "Oh." It was a girl oh. that you may or may not work with as well. Mm. Word. Oh, yeah. I know her. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Because I, uh, me and Josh's mom are pretty tight now. <laughs> Which yeah. is weird to like, say. Nah, we're going to go home. She's always just like, come over. I got a dope ass back porch. We can smoke some weed, drink some beer. I haven't made it over yet, but I definitely would. Yeah. Like, can I DJ? You know? Yeah. I think you should. If I can pick the music, some Barry White, something sexy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to be rude, but. It's 6 uh, Yeah, as we said, do we go over? Yeah. What do you want to. Uh, sorry. Are you good? No, I'm no? fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not that desperate. I just need to. We're going to the show tonight, right? Yeah. It's yeah. at eight. Copy. Yeah, I need to go to. Yeah. Um, you want to promote? Yeah. What do you want to promote? Um, Elliot A. Weber on any social media, Facebook, Sorry, Twitter, Instagram. Dying. That's your GoPro. Yeah. Um, that's a good signal. To 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Elliot A. Weber. Um, any of those will link to my album if you want to listen to it. Or you could just uh, search coming out uh, on YouTube or SoundCloud for now. I'll get it on more platforms eventually. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's it's super it's funny. I've listened to it one and a half times and I've seen the material many times, you know, obviously you know, we yeah. see each other's material, but I like yeah. the delivery, I like the order. It was strong, man. Yeah. I, I wish it. I could have seen uh didn't Ryan have a heroin overdose joke or something at the beginning of that? Uh-huh. Um maybe. That's what I heard. I don't that know. That sounds likely. Yeah. I love it when Ryan goes way off book. Yeah, right? way dark. <laughs> way dark or whatever. <laughs> Drunk Ryan's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, where can they this. find us, Brian? Uh, you can find us at GLW underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter, Greenlight Weekend on YouTube and Facebook, and Greenlight Weekend at gmail.com for any feedback whatsoever, dick pics. We will 
send them directly to Elliot. I appreciate get that. Some. And Callie. I would like to make a calendar. She wants some too. Could I get a <laughs> of dick pics? <laughs> <laughs> Can I give a proud uh, Pride Week shout out? Yeah. Yeah. Or Pride Month. It's Pride. Speaking of dick pic. Calendar. Pride Month. So uh, you know, tell your LGBTQ plus AI. There's a bunch of letters now. Tell those people you love them and uh, suck a dick. It literally, it's if you don't suck dick this month, it's homophobic, regardless of your gender. Fuck yeah. So hmm. I respect that. It's really important that you guys do that. Uh, yeah, and I feel like Comedy Showcase Durango, Try check them out. new every day. Yeah. <laughs> check suck out, a dick. Yeah. And go suck a dick. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. I like saying go suck a dick, but yeah. I like I mean it in like a, not a disrespectful way. I mean it in a, the like, best thing. Go suck a dick. Yeah. The best thing you could do for yourself is go suck a dick. Yeah. Also check out Animus Marketing and the Whiskey Reel. I hope they all go suck dicks. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Thanks to Hip Hop Trip I think we're leaving on out SoundCloud. Vaginas here. Some people don't like dick. Right. Like yeah, ladies, no, if you're a lesbian, right. suck a dick. You okay. know what I mean? <laughs> they might have, and, and that like, one that's is, not for that me. That one is actually because I'm angry at you. That mm. one's not out of pride. No, I'm just kidding. You hear that, Kate? Elliot's angry at you. I wish she was here to check me because I said shit I shouldn't have said the whole time. So it'd be nice to have Kate to just roll her eyes and smack me when I said it. Maybe next That'll week. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll okay. make it happen. So check out Elliot Weber coming out. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Peace. Yeet. Right, trip, are you rebel or you hip hop? Well, it's all the same to me, sneakers and flip flops. Now the way I rock them straight to the tip top. Wear it on my sleeve and carry passion in a zip flop. Super cool in it, I'm colder than Kid Ross. And telling any big boss to get lost, I spit raw. So Rick Ross can kick rocks. No denying that this white boy spit tall. The missing piece in that puzzling jigsaw. I never even had a sip of that crystal. Keep hearing the same, it's making me pissed off. A 5 8 heavyweight when I straight flip bars. Drums and guitar, wondering where the kids are. They out again, listening to that big star. Can't even count how many blocks that I ripped on. Your mama shake ass, and she don't even like the song. You can fly without your feathers. You can fly. But I'm smoother than your Ferrari. I like lights in the club, but I'm more on Bob Marley. What are we talking? When there's people out there starving, how could you worry about the lights and paparazzi? That is not me. Like ratting when the cops pop me. I ain't a thug with some time. You got caught, G. You got chief, but you don't get off scot free. Think you the dude, but dude, you lost me. And again, I said I'm sorry. Move faster than your Bugatti. You started making money. They started thinking you got the got a baby mommy. And probably never see you hardly. A rapid hobby. Tired of cleaning baby's body. But you got your Maserati and bottles of that Bacardi. The bitches in that Hardy that can hardly wait to party. And your homies with no skill, but still super cocky. Said we keep it real here, so get up, everybody. You can fly without your feathers. You can fly away. You can fly without your feathers. You can fly away. This come from deep down, like Davy Jones in the crack and attack your whole ship. Leave it singing on a fraction, your wackness. Inspiration for this beat I'm smashing. Heard me on your station, I say I'm radioactive. When the sun go down, I'm eating good and getting action. Blazing up, full moon, watching waves crashing. Champagne splashing, prepare my salmon blacking. Blue dreams rolling out of bed and get back at it. Doing damage like me on the 5th of November. Anticipating my explosion guarantees that y'all remember. Doing it for my people. I'm doing it for my pleasure, whatever the endeavor I be doing this shit forever, man Am I forever damn? Can I ride a better jam? Face down, pen and pad, no time for that Instagram I got my notebook and fam, so I'm rich, man But mama, I ain't playing when I say I make that hundred grand